You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. And away we go, fellas. We are 1084 at the box. Welcome back to another episode of the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. It's the only podcast in the entire globe that brings the firehouse kitchen table to you, as always, joined by my buddy, my pal, my lifelong friend of 40 years, Paul Bunyan. Louie, there he is. Woo! What a tree. What up, Coops? Shalom. We got, Shalom. We got Shalom. Pandemic Pete and the wheels of steel. There he goes, fresh off his survival of the pandemic. He's the COVID kid, a lean, lean, 147 <laughs> pounds of fury. Bad bones. Did he get virus? What do you want? get virus? I had I had I had the virus. You get the high five. You had the virus. <laughs> you had the virus. <laughs> virus. Welcome back to the I virus. I had the virus and made me. We shit. got a very funny guy on tonight. I love this guy. Love him. Always enjoyed working with him. There he is, the one and only Captain Billy Walsh. There he goes. And very nice. You might have seen him. On Very the nice. big screen, you might have seen him on the big screen, or you might have seen him going job to job in the Gihetto. It's the one insane <laughs> guy. We got a good show with some good pictures, some very funny pictures tonight, actually. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing tonight? Everybody good? I'm it's good. Cold, cold. Cold. cold, it's cold as shit, but I did have shorts on again today, bro. Every day I wear shorts, no matter what. I don't know why, but 34 degrees doesn't bother me anymore, except for when it gets windy. That was, wasn't too bad. What are you up there in the North 19 Pole? right now? Jeez. Blowing Mom, 20. Me, yeah. Probably yeah, chilly. Yeah, really? It's a little chilly. You know what you, know what you yeah, should probably cool. do, Louie, is you should probably head on over to www.gettinsaltyapparel.com like to get yourself a, a really nice firefighter hoodie or other firefighter apparel and accessories. When it's chilly. Glasses and lighters yeah. and cigar like lighters it. and all those wonderful things. So if you head on over to GettinSaltyApparel.com, you're not only supporting us, you're supporting the show. And uh, guys, go on over and check it out, GettinSaltyApparel.com. Yeah. First do it, your old lady's box apparel. Next <laughs> shameless plug, Pete. I like it. Good job. So Pete, see, before we go any further, why don't you yeah. throw out the word of the day? Give it to us. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of the day is... Elmo. It's sunny day. Taking your cares away. What are you trying to do? What do you got? Uh, I got my my norm. Cool. I got, uh, you got a little cool. Yeah, like uh, a little hard seltzer. Cat, what do you got, Cat? My vagine. I have the uh, mocktail. Oh, that's nice. Mocktail. Yes. Right. Mocktail. Is that you your look like you're in McSorley's or something? Like, it's like a Shirley Temple. It looks like wow. you're sitting in a grand ballroom. Where are you? <laughs> this is uh, La Casa de Mia, you know. Oh, it must be nice. Oh, 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 man. Uh, I'm just that home. Third, that third one must have been you know, nice. It looks oh, like a big oh, W. Oh, it's a big W there. Right. You see? It's a big W. Wow. It's a lot I'll of dough. Yeah, the big W. That's how I remember my first name and my last one. I never got out, that kind man. of money shooting behind the scenes. My goodness. Oh, wow. No, man. No. That's third oh, one. Yeah, that's third watch cash. Woo. That's third watch, cash. third watch cash. Wow, wow, we. Wow. Nah, yeah, yeah, man. Nice. Looks like, uh, nice. looks like uh, the we'll Titanic start. when they're coming down the grand staircase there, bro. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what that looks like. A lot of money. Rose. Hey, we got any Titanic music? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, word. I think that's a comedy. Titanic, yeah. personally. All right. Yeah. So let's dive right into Cat Walsh's timeline. It's my uh, Titanic music. <laughs> <laughs> Next day on the. I don't, oh, right, right, I don't think uh, Lieutenant Walsh is a JEW. No, sir. He, so. he, got the virus. he had the virus. It messed with his head a little bit. He got Can't the virus. Know. Yes. All right, so let's uh, graduated LaSalle Academy. Uh, yeah. Noted that Ray Downey. Yeah. Alma mater is Alma mater, yeah. Were if you I a Brooklyn that, guy? I would have played that car. Bo born and bred Brooklyn guy? Where'd you grow up that you went yeah, to? Yeah, I, I born on 3rd Avenue, 15th Street. In, uh, what is that? South Brooklyn. Brooklyn. South That's Brooklyn. South Brooklyn. Well, it was before it was Park Slope. Ah. You know, before the cash more, came in. You know, yeah, yeah. It was all gin mills and uh, a whole bunch of Irish guys places. and grocery stores. Every corner was a was a gym, though. Yeah, beautiful. 
<laughs> what is a cat? <laughs> What do you think of loose curtains there, Cap? You guys want to know? What do you think of loose curtains? Very presidential. <laughs> uh, I'm, not gonna say, I'm not going to say nothing. You know. hey, he lives right around the corner. He's got a like long range rifle. He does, <laughs> 30 yeah. six will definitely so reach. Yeah, yeah, you can reach. I can reach you. I know we break Louis' balls about being a longshoreman, but you are actually a longshoreman. Right? Yes, 75 I was. to 80? Well, yeah, right out, of, right out of high school, yeah. I turn 18, I, I start on the piers in Howland Hook, in Staten Island. Oh, that's a tough yeah, job. Yeah, I work with guys like Johnny Gas in the head and Petey Two Shoes. <laughs> and, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Nicky the Fish. Well, yeah, Nicky the Louis Fish. The clam. And, yeah. <laughs> Tony, Tony forgets a lot. You know, <laughs> and those, those are real guys, you know. Those are real no way. Yeah, real, absolutely real guys. Don't you let me have know. Frankie and Rocco help you find your checkbook. And, uh, and, you know, it was a nice union job right out of high school. Yeah, you're probably making some good scratch. I was making some scratch, yeah. I was doing okay. So then you decide to be a roadie? 19th well, no, well, yeah. Well, so I was working. Here's what happened. All right, go. So I had a nice cushy job on the pier. Yeah. Right? But me being my own worst enemy, which I like to say, first off, thank you guys for having me on the show. Beautiful. All right? Our pleasure. Thank, thank, you, thank you for thank putting you. me down as episode number 41. All right, that was very cool. And, hey, 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 and thank you for putting me right behind Kevin Shea. Right. Yeah. All right. So, I just want to let you know before I got you, there was like seven guys that dropped out because they didn't want to follow. Him. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, so, how can we follow that guy? Yeah, 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 the nicest yeah. guy in the world. Yeah, let's get that schmuck from forty-one. He'll see the yeah. number. He'll take it in. My face. So, <laughs> so like, uh, so like uh, the, so, the guy from building management or building maintenance. Yeah. Or Billy Walsh. There's a guy in the shops. Billy Walsh. The guy in the shops knows everything yeah. about trucks. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Billy Walsh. Good. So uh, naturally, I'm. I, I've always been my own worst enemy. So I got a little trouble uh, on the pier because I smacked somebody's uh, grandson for being nice. You know, he went on the list. The guy was a douche. So I put him on the list and then I smacked him. So Give him a up, fresh one. A fresh one. I had to I ended up I was working inside the shop and I had uh um actually I was a pretty good welder, so I, I, I had a helper. And the helper was a drummer. And he's a drummer in a rock and roll band. And he would walk around, he wouldn't do any work, but he'd be hitting like welder rods all day long, like this, you know. <laughs> so it finally paid off when he says, Why don't you come down to the show? And, and and check it out. So you know it, it was CBGBs and, and oh, Max's good. Kansas City and the Mud Club and oh, wow. you know so so I said yeah sure no problem. So I, I started going down. I started like helping them carry his stuff in, and then they got a record contract, and then they went on tour. You know so they said hey you want to go on tour? I said well you know I'm working on the peers. Uh, what are you going to pay me on tour? You know and it's well pay you the same thing that you're getting paid on the pier. Oh, I was shit. like. So I, a leave of, I said, yeah, yeah. So I took a leave of absence and I you went grabbed your to the band. shirt. You grabbed yeah. your poo and uh, uh, your you bell know, bottoms. The, look, look, the orange hair, the whole nine yards. You yeah, know, the, it was a couple of tutorutus, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was extracurricular like, activity, but on the road, you really can't do that, man. You, you well, do like six I, weeks. I, I that's why, people, that's why they're so messed up. That's yeah. why all those rock stars are like, they're all messed up because you can't keep doing that. It, like you, you just like you, you burn out. So, so ask, anyway, what, so that's what. What, yeah. what do the roadies get? Like whatever the girl, whatever girls that the rock stars don't want, the ro the roadies gotta get them, bro. Right. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna oh, say this. Oh the rock stars allegedly. get their pick. Yeah, allegedly, the rock stars get their pick. But if I'm spending time in the club from like I'm loading in at five o'clock in the afternoon and loading out at maybe two, you know, two thirty in the morning. Oh, boy, that's yeah. a that's a long time to spend in a club. And there's always waitresses and barmaids and, you know, and it was not, I, I, I was, I was. You were doing all right. Fun. You were doing all right. right. You were doing all right. Nice. I did all right. <laughs> how, how old were you then? You were, I was probably, uh, let me see. I was 18, 19, 20, maybe 20, 21. Oh, 21. Tough. Yeah. Yeah, I was a yeah, baby. It must have been tough. So you, yeah. probably, you probably set up the talent for the rock stars, you know, they're like, maybe like this. One, two for him, maybe one for me over here, three, four for one, him. Three for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the best, I, you know, I get to work on, um, I did stage security, you know, so as the band's playing, people grabbing at him, stuff like that, that was fun. 
lights go out, hit him with a kill light. I was going to say, you could give him a couple up. more yeah. fresh ones. Yeah, a lot yeah, of fresh yeah, ones, yeah. a lot of backhands yeah, no going around. <laughs> no problem. It was nice. good. So how long yeah. did you do that for then? What, I did that for a couple of years. And then yeah. right when I got called from the fire department, they were going on a world tour. It was oh, – uh, it wow. was it, at one time in uh, in the I That's guess crazy. the late 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 seventies, like a couple of DC tens, they were falling out of the sky. So Stiff Records uh, bought a DC ten. It was Reckless Eric, Lena Love, Lena Lovich, uh, Dirty Looks, <laughs> um, Dirty Love. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was five different bands, and they were going on a world tour. They were getting into playing and going on a world tour. And I had to make a decision. I was like, I had to go on the wow. world tour. Or, hmm. uh, to burn a building. Yeah. So I took the fire department, thank God. Why did, you, uh, did you have any family on the job? What made you I take I was going to ask you that. Did no, your old man tell no, you this is what no. you're going to do? No, wow. no, no. Um, I'm the first. I'm going to probably be the last. Really? Um, <laughs> well, because you can't get on anymore. You know, it's hard. I live up in Warwick. Yeah. Unless, you, you, unless you can score 115. You know, you can't get on. Yeah, you're already Or you behind. go through EMS, yeah. you know. You're right. That's a really the only way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your kid can't but, drive uh, in with you can't kid can't drive in with the Mercedes Benz from Warwick and pretend to get on the job. There. Is this happen. where is this where I sign up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh do me a favor. Yeah. I think you already <laughs> have my name. You have my, give me a my dad called. Oh, uh, give me a latte and uh somebody latte, will put yeah. the Benz around the corner and I'll sign this paperwork. Do you know who my father is? Yeah, so I had a couple of roommates, uh both of them just got out of service one was a uh, marine the other one was in the navy and they were taking all the city tests so you know bus driver transit p police department and they didn't come home with the test they say hey you want to take the you know the track work i was like no you know and, and I, I you know i still like i said when i came home off the tour i was still working for the on the piers so it was not a problem you know i, I just walked from one to the other and i was still making good money so uh um uh, you know, they say you want to be a cop. I said no. They said, well, you know, you want to be a fireman. I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. You know, I remember the trucks when they used to stop and you ring the bell, and you know, it was nice. So I said, that, I'll take that one. So they oh, were kind of really good for me huh? because it was like seven. It was like eight bucks or something like that. And you had to get a money order. They got the money order because they really wanted to do it. They got the money order. They got me the envelope. I just, you know, they filled it out for me. I just like put my thumb print on it. You know. In a moment of sobriety, I was like, hey, it's on here. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and they said, like, like this, like this. Hold on a minute. <laughs> hold this. <laughs> uh, hold, hold. <laughs> it's some good hold shit. This. Allegedly. Hold <laughs> so, um, so, you know, they sent it in and uh, I took the test and I scored well on the test. And that was it. That was, you know, uh, wow. and, and, I was, and I was back on the pier. And then I was like, because I got in trouble, I was like under the gun. And there was, a, a, I think I should have got on in like 79. Or, you know, they, they froze the list there because yeah. of the the, um, the female lawsuit, right? Mm -hmm. And I should have got on in like 78 or 79, but I didn't get on until November 80. And I was, uh, the pay phone went off at the, in the shop, this big, huge shop that I was working in. And, uh, one of the guys says, hey, hey, it's for you. And a lady on the phone says, hey, you still want to be a fireman? I was like, yeah. Well, they said, show up here on Saturday. No shit. And, and, and you know, oh, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, they can't call me here. You guys have been great. They can't call me here. I'm out of here. You've been great. Thank yeah. you. Here's my Gupalini. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Tip the waiters and waitresses. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The guy, uh, what's his name? Tony Forget. What was his name? What? Tony Forgets a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That guy, he didn't pick up the phone. Be like this. Tony, forget for like, yeah, it's a guy named Billy Walsh. Yeah, Billy Walsh. Billy Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> Never yeah. heard of him. Never heard of him. A, yeah, Johnny Gas. <laughs> this guy, Johnny Gas in the head. How do you get a name like that? Johnny Gas in the head. I, don't I mean, know. my job before I got in trouble was I would go to the, I would go out to the local uh, beer distributor, buy two cases of Michelob, and then go to the to the ship, go on the ship. And they got the you know the big refrigerator units there with the ice and get and put ice on it, and that was my job. Really? <laughs> that, that was it. So that and then I got in trouble. Right into the what happens when you got in trouble? What was your job when, after you got in trouble? And then I was like hammering like things <laughs> in the shop. You know, like, oh yeah, well, you know, like hey, it's gonna be a common thread. You'll see this <laughs> <laughs> thread through the entire thing. Watch it. <laughs> 
Just, just Pete, watch take it. that little no. snippet. Just keep repeating it over and over and over again. <laughs> Roger that. Uh, you, come, do. you come out of probie school and you go to 242 engine, single engine in Brooklyn. Uh a okay. fresh, brand new. Oh, what oh. in God's good oh, okay. What's going okay. on there? Oh, let, let's talk about Look this. At let's this face. Look at this face. Look, Look at this face. face. I was going to say, what's going on with the hunch? Well, I was afraid. Um, <laughs> so so let's scared. talk about this. So my probie class, right? I got like uh, uh, Steve Buscemi, right? Tommy Richardson. I had Nick the Dick, right? <laughs> uh, um, wow, it's an old stock Timmy, class. Timmy Kelly, uh, John Moran was our valedictorian. Wow. So I don't know if you know uh, John yeah, Moran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah John Moran, <laughs> Dennis Devlin, but uh, Terry Hatton was my was my squad leader. Oh my right? goodness wow. gracious. So so I come at I come off the pier, right? And I, I come into Foley School. Now you guys talk about hard charges, right? <laughs> so the right thing to do when you go to Proby School is shut up, Absolutely. don't say anything. Don't be, don't open your mouth. Don't be that guy. And, and just don't be that guy. Right. Wow. So it was me and Nick the Dick right next to me. <laughs> Think about how this is going to work out. Right? Oh, no. So Terry, Terry is our squad leader. Now, I'm 22. Terry's probably 21. Right. Terry looked like he was 21 when he was in his 40s. Yeah. No, he looked very right? young. His whole so life. He's, a, he's a string bean guy like this. Right. And they said, you know, has anybody had any military experience here? And, you know, one guy said a couple of guys and they make them the squad leaders. And then somebody points to Terry and they go, Terry, you're the squad leader. Right. For, for whatever reasons, I think his father was chief, chief in charge of safety at the time. Right. So um, so me and Nick made it our life's mission to break Terry's balls because he was the sweetest guy. He was so sweet. He was such a nice guy. And we just broke his balls relentlessly. Little did we know. Yeah, yeah. This was not a good idea. Yeah, he was going to be the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was going to be the man, right. He, oh, this he, is not a he, good idea. He so, actually I mean, uh, texted me this morning. He was like, when you, when you, he said, I couldn't wait for the show. He was like, Keith was like me and me and Bill had so much fun in probie school. It was incredible. That's what he was bad. saying. It was bad, you know, because I was like, you know, I, I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's go. Let's go. Give me throw, throw me in the fire. Hold me down. I want to do this, you know, I because I, I really wanted to do it. I said if I'm if I'm going to be a fireman, right, and there's a good possibility you can get killed here, I'm going to try to learn as much as I can when I'm in school. Yeah. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna break Terry's balls. You know, <laughs> that's freaking so, great. So, like, well, you know, you line up for roll call. Everybody's ready. You know, you got your boots, the yellow jacket, the whole nine yards. And right before roll call, I'm gonna knock his boots over. So we, <laughs> we stand up, and his boots would be knocked over, and I would get this down the line, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what else. Well, um, so they said, they said, look, you know. You want to you want to go someplace. You want to you, you know you want to go to a busy house. You be top ten in your class. You're pretty much right to take it. Right. I was top ten in my class. I went to two forty two engine. <laughs> <laughs> because think everybody was hooked. Everybody think was hooked. It. One everybody was hooked, and I kicked over the wrong set of boots. There you too go. Many ah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe this just awesome. came up like this popped on me like the other day when you you told me. Listen, go find some stuff, whatever you need to find. We're doing right. something like, uh, you know, uh, um, we, we, we want some information here. I'm like, how the hell did I end up in 242? You know, and not that 242 is a bad company, but it's pretty like, you know, it's pretty slow. It's yeah. 92nd Street and 5th Avenue, Brooklyn. Nothing what, is, that the chief, is the chief in there with you? Are that was the 12th there? division was in there. Oh, the 12th. It was the division there. headquarters, yeah. But, you know, you That's where the guy... <laughs> Not only should you be asking, how'd you get to 242? You should have been asking, how the hell did you get into those jeans that day, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a, that's a little sassoon there. Maybe those are sassoons, that. baby. <laughs> Woo! So, Some hiding huggers. So, 242, right, uh, you had to go to, uh, 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 as you walk down the stairs, you hit one of the stairs, like the third stair from the top, and a bell would go off in the kitchen. That was because when the deputy came when downstairs, came you, down. yeah, you, you'd hear him. Ah. So you're supposed to like the three by was supposed to wash the deputy's car. It's on the on the left there in the picture. Was uh, supposed to wash uh, the deputy's car every night. The three by, 
and, and and this is where guys would guys would go there and like wash the one side that he could see. <laughs> <laughs> the, the driver's side was dirty. The one side that the the deputy was on was clean. But uh, yeah, it, I mean, you know, it was a great, it was a nice bunch of guys. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't catch a job till maybe uh, I don't know six six eight weeks later. And it was like, uh, we was, you know, second engine on a second alarm or something like that. And uh, I didn't catch much work there. So you were a white cloud. Uh, I, I didn't meet, I, I met Eddie Smith was, uh, he was a captain at the time. And uh, he, he turned out to be a really, really good friend of mine. He was, uh, he was lieutenant in the first two engine at the Walmart fire. So, you know, he's a shop guy, he really knew his stuff. Right. And he looked at me and he said like, you know, you should not be here. And and you couldn't you couldn't transfer until you were third grade. So at the time it was like you know you got out of pro school. It was nine months till you turned grade. So as as soon as I turned grade, I, I put a he, he said you know put your transfer put your transfer in. So I put my transfer in. It was like uh, uh, all the busy trucks in, in the fifteen, like one thirteen, one seventy five, um, uh, one thirty two. I think at the time you you got four choices. Yeah, I think now it's like six, right? Yeah, I think, I think at the time you got four, and I put in like I don't know whatever it was, one away or something like that. And uh, he says, "Well, listen, you better put in something that I might be able to get you to, or else you're going to be here longer." So he said, "Put in one sixty one truck," and that's how I got to the truck. Meanwhile, Terry, Terry, my my whole probie school. I, 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 trust me, I'm not bad mouthing Terry Hatton. Never. I love the guy. I love the guy. He's a great super fireman. I loved him my whole career, right? Terry was, uh, we were, the pro class was the only ones that could go. You Nobody went to trucks. Everybody went to engines because I think a, a, a pro got killed at the Macy's fire. Right, right, he right. Killed, so they put yeah. everybody in the and engine. All, all, yeah, all the probies, um, all the probies had to go to um, engine companies. One guy went to a truck. Who's that? Anybody? Then he was a rescue too the next year. Oh my! Yeah, yeah, Are you yeah, kidding? Yeah. Wow! Yeah. You know, hey, know look, man. You know, he should honestly. If there's anybody that should have been, did him. He yeah. he was like that's. I, I say, you know what? Go. You know, because you, you're the guy that should be there. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, that's okay, how I but, Bill, just to, Not to cut you off, but a lot, a lot of that, that theme comes up, you know, where a guy who's in the company, whether it's the captain, the boss, a fireman, senior guy, says to, to a new guy, they could tell right away that the guy's into the job, he wants to do more. They'll be like, all right, listen, you have to, you're going to have to make a move because, you know, this, this might not be the place that you want to stay. You know, it's not a, a fault. Every, every guy has a spot where they want to be. You know what I mean? But you ever see a cat run young. around the room? You ever see a cat run around the room? Basically, <laughs> <laughs> that was me there. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. The I was just running around the firehouse. That's yeah, Coney yeah. Island. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's they, 161 what? truck in Coney Island. Were they a towel ladder? What were they? I can't see. They were a towel ladder. Yes, they towel were. Ladder? Yeah. And a great bunch of guys there. Great bunch, of, like a lot of older guys. Yeah. A lot of guys from busy places that just you know ended up there at the time when I was there. They were probably doing about 35, 3,600 runs a year. Wow. They were, you know, I think maybe they were in the top twenty-five. Like you know, maybe maybe right out of the top twenty-five mm. as far as work. You know, it wasn't Is that a the real smiley old... face one. That's a smiley face. Uh... Yes, I. That's right. A story about that. That's from that's from a uh, that was a second alarm at a um, bumper car. You know, a big big bumper yeah, car yeah, with yeah, the metal, yeah, yeah right the metal the ceiling rugs. and the metal floor, and and the bumper car would have the you know the connector Electric. on the top. Yep. That, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a we had a second alarm at that thing uh, at, at one of those, and you know we lost the building because you can't go you can't pull the ceiling. You got to hope that the power stays off. <laughs> Unless you might get you know, electrified. Let's put a hook into this, right? <laughs> and that was uh, that was the sign on the front of the building. We took it off. You know, we opened a towel out and put it out. On the way down, I took it off and we hung it in the oh, fire. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's, well, uh, I don't. I didn't think they were gonna miss it. Friendly Firehouse. Is that? What no, no, no. That's the no, one. No, it was uh, um, the best yeah. ride in Coney Island. Oh, okay. uh, George C. Till you. You know, the, the I had a picture of it. I should have brought it. Yeah. But this is what I wanted to talk, talk about Coney Island. All right, so two trucks on the island. 
right? 161 and 166. 166. Yeah, 169 was down in Brighton Beach, right? So basically, 161 was second due to everybody, but nobody else was coming. It's almost like working up in the 52s. You know, nobody else is coming for a while anyway, right? So, you like, these guys, they were very – they weren't, like, real uh, aggressive kind of uh, – um, like in your face, kind of like, you know, they, they, they did it already. You know yeah. what I mean? So they knew the job. The, the, the model was like, know your tools, know your job. And you were constantly, because I got, I, I got to read this off because this is what you had down there. This is what you responded to either first or second to row frames, private dwellings, queen ends, rear tenements. You know what a rear tenement is? Yep. Yep. We had them in Yep. That's yeah, the building, and then there's another building behind it, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Old Lord tenements, new Lord tenements, class A multiple dwellings, H type, um, so you had amusement everything. rides, yeah, amusement rides, you had bad houses, you had shit fires. You ever go to a shit fire? I'm out. No, okay, I'll, I'll tell you about <laughs> that. Show. Me out. You, had, uh, you had the boardwalk, and then you had these all oh, the boardwalk these, fires, right? You had the boardwalk fires were like the wind whipping in the middle yeah, of the winter, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, whipping down. up a boardwalk fire, yeah. But um, you had these federally funded uh, uh, high rises that were – they didn't have to conform to city building right. codes. Right, we had them too. Yeah, they so, had cock lofts and all sorts of crazy shit, well, right? Yeah, well, they had they had uh, duplex and triplex up and down. So if say you had a fire like on the 13th floor, you had a fire on the 13th floor, you might have to go to get to the adjoining apartment or to get to the uh, right. floor above, floor below, you might or floor, have to go two floor to below. you might have to go to sixteen, or you might have to go to uh, uh, ten. Yeah, it's crazy. Know, to get, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each other. Crazy. And, and they were like, you know, they were tough jobs. Like the yeah. the, uh, the triplex downs, you open the front door, and it was just a stairway that went down three floors. That's it. And then you went in, and then you could go back up on the inside. Yeah. It was <laughs> so you know. There was when you were riding around in a truck, you know, old old school towel ladder hanging off the side, showing your guns off, right? Cool, oh, you know, you no. <laughs> you know, you gotta have your gun out, you know, yeah, you're holding on with it. Yeah. And, loaded. Yeah. And, and the guys would be just all day long going, okay, we're second to here, fires on the third floor, what are you doing? You know, and it was just constant, constantly, constantly doing that. Know your tools, know your job. Wow. And we got, that we got kind of of uh, 161, somebody all timers in there, Petey. Yeah, with that kind of experience, it was just like you know, it was it wasn't a bad thing, you know, to be there. There's uh, there's yeah, like Amos Amos, a great guy, a guy all the way to the right. Um, he he was uh, I don't know where he worked before that, but uh, uh, Cardona went, he was in like 107 truck. He went went back to 170, I think. Um. These are a bunch of young guns, though. Who's Zawa the guy? In the, who's the guy in the front? You were talking about him earlier. Oh, Frank Cardona. Um, he was uh, he was a tunnel rat in Vietnam. The one thing I did get from uh, from Coney Island is good trench foot. <laughs> you go in the shower, you get like athlete's foot. You never get rid of. That's it. Uh, so, like the doctor says, "Where'd you get this from?" I said, oh, "You know, I was working in Coney Island. A bunch floor. of guys from Vietnam. Yeah, they're all working in the shower. So forget it. You're never gonna get rid of it. Don't worry about it." But yeah, he's a tunnel rat. He's actually got a garrote scar on his neck where he's garroted in a tunnel. Come and I said, "What'd you do?" Yeah. And he said, "I killed the guy." Wow. <laughs> shit. I oh. said, "Yeah, what'd you do?" He says, "I killed him." <laughs> the yeah, guy had, no. uh, yeah, he's got the like the hangman's noose scar on his neck. Wow, you said he had yeah, like eighty-two confirmed kills. Or it's like, like I don't know, like fifty-six confirmed oh. kills. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't know. Like oh. how happy like, everything like, was gravy after that. Right? He's the nicest right, guy on the planet because everything is gravy after that. Right? Nicest he's guy on the planet. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, you're gonna like shake him up? No way. No yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, great guy. Pete, go up. Who go up a little bit on that picture? Yeah, the guy. Uh, who does that look like standing next to the lieutenant, Ruffy? I hope that's a captain. That's no. Vinny DeRosa. Looks like my son, Nick. Does it look like my son? Oh yeah, yeah. I, uh, standing next to the captain, yeah. Vinny DeRosa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, in fact, you know what? He, he, he almost got killed in one of those uh, federal high rises. He really? was, uh, yeah, he was a truck chauffeur, and. They were looking for something upstairs, and he went into the he went into the elevator without his gear. 
Oh shit! And 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 yeah, the elevator was not a small move. And yeah. or or he went in without a mask, maybe just without a mask. I don't know. I wasn't there, but uh, um, I know like the elevator opened on on the fire floor. Oh, and yeah, when they got him, they got him downstairs. They they uh, went through the front window of the place. I think <laughs> Kelly said that if they didn't get him out of there when they did, he he was dead. Wow, shit! Sure. You know, but it, yeah, really good fireman. But wow. and you, you make one mistake. Yeah. Hey, hey Ruffy, that those federal buildings you're talking about, were those the same as the ones on Roosevelt Island? Like we yeah, something very similar to that. Yep. Yeah. They they overlap each other, like you know Yeah, no, no, exactly. Right. You know, they'll be under or over each other. That's Billy Oleander, the smartest guy I've ever met. Ask him anything, he knows something about it. He really? says if you want to learn how to do something, somebody wrote it down in a book somewhere. Go find it. I like the stereo system. I like that. Hey, cappuccino qualifier right behind my head. There's a cappuccino machine that wouldn't let you use it unless you got cappuccino qualified. Yeah, you get a ribbon for that. You get you get something. house training, you got a ribbon, like a you know, like a little something, a band, an armband. Yeah, that was my favorite shirt, Bill. Those shirts there, like that. I I love those shirts. Yeah, I used to love that. That's the one with the patch. Then they started chinching out. There's another 161 picture. There you go. Jack Hickey. That was my uh, Joe. You see the second guy from the right? Yeah. That's uh, Billy Pepitone. That's Joe Pepitone's brother. Baseball player. Yeah, yeah. I said, what happened, Billy? He said, I couldn't hit a curveball. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. His son's running for mayor now. Is that right? Really? Looks like a big dude. Yeah, yeah. His, His son's name is not Elmo. I just like talked you into sleep over there. We're, like, <laughs> we're, a, little, we're, we're a little gun shy. Uh, gun shy we're, hanging, we're hanging on your every word that you say, Come bro. On. Come on. Over Come here. Here. You're throwing curveballs. Next thing you know, yeah. almost. <laughs> Come on, keep hey. up. Come on, keep up. Keep Did up. Let's go. Come on, next six, you beat. Come on, let's all go. All right, all right. How about these captains, though? Oh, that's Jack Hickey. Oh, oh, all right, all right, all right. These are four captains from 161. Uh, this was at like their they had an anniversary or something. And nice. Jack Hickey, the guy on on pointing his finger at me. Over there, yeah. he wrote my mother a letter. He said, "Today we let Billy drive the fire truck. He did good. Nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, it was a it was a great place to work, you know. But uh, um, at 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 one point, let me see. At one point, there was, I mean, Jack Ronaldson. You know, Al Ronaldson's older brother. Yeah. Jack. Jack mm. was uh, uh, one of the guys in my groups. Uh, this guy, Patty Fitzsimmons, Johnny Knutson. It was like Jack Lelaine there. Guys were like, you know, Jack was a boxer. Mm. Uh, um, um, Patty was a, a, a bodybuilder. Um, John Knutson was like an all-around athlete. These guys were like, you know, have pull-up contests in, in the firehouse. And it was, it was just a great place. But Jack got killed. He got killed by uh, – he got shot. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Uh, oh. Stevie Lopez. You know, um, Stevie Lopez was in squad one. And then he got lifted out of squad one. They sent him down a 245 engine. And he was, he got killed. Uh, all these guys in one year. And wow. then uh, off, who else? Off was duty? It? Obviously, these were uh, all off duty. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and then my friend Mike Dean from uh, the Tin House. He, wow. he got, you know, he, he died the same wow. year. And, I, and then it was like, it was time to go. It was time yeah. to move. Well, th- I I think, uh, speaking about getting killed, what uh, what kind of roadkill is in that guy's head right next to you? What is that? <laughs> yeah, hey, John, John, John Zalikowski was a great guy, you know. But, I'm not hey, saying well, he wasn't yeah. a great guy. Maybe he was a great yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's pretty bad. Mama mia. It's pretty bad. What are you going to do? He's, I know. This, no, this guy's got a good Here's a story. Here's a story about Amo, right? So Amo, we would go shopping in the supermarket, and – we, we'd say Amo would go like around the store because he's a great cook. The super cook uh, he's a uh, mason, does cement work, right? Me, yeah. I can't so, believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it, right? So we send Amo, Amo be shopping around the store and we go in the macaroni aisle and we oh, stand in, our, in the macaroni aisle over the radio and say, all right, Amo, well, number 42. He's like, a Cini a Pepe. <laughs> all right, Amo, Amo, number 73. 
Didi Rigotti. You know, <laughs> he, knew, he knew every macaroni. By every number. number that, yeah, every number macaroni. That's, it was like, all right, yeah. that's Renzoni, Brent. Renzoni yeah, always try, had the numbers on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try to stump him. You can never stump him. He wow. always did oh the macaroni. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he, 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 he always uh, – he always do the macaroni, and then uh, and, like the meals down there were like amazing. Yeah, you know the, the cooks really took really a lot, a lot of pride in, in feeding you. And like they had uh, allegedly they had a, an anisette, uh, a case of anisette for the nice. uh, black coffee after oh. after dinner, and then it would be like you know a, a, a salad, and then like and then a, you know a, a main course and a pasta course. And, it was right. it was pretty it was pretty. I good. mean, you, t- you think about the meal in itself, bro. How much fun was it? Shopping, uh, prepping it together, sitting there eating together. You know, I mean, that whole thing it's, was. Just, it's you gotta have show thing is what it's about. You know what yeah. I mean? And that just makes it total. That makes us totally different animals than everybody else on the planet. Yeah. Because like we sleep and we eat together. You yeah. know, yeah. And, and we do that and 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 like. You know, there's, some, there's a couple Coney Island stories. Like, there's nothing like Coney Island now and Coney Island then. They're two different animals, uh-huh. right? Then it was like they were, uh, um, you know, right along. It was it was pretty bad. Yeah, it was wasn't, going it wasn't in the toilet. Yeah, it was, it was the yeah, Warriors. Yeah, yeah. That movie, The well, Warriors. Yeah, exactly. But in the summertime, it was beautiful. Yeah, you know, and it's uh, here's a, um, so we get a job at, in uh, um, on 15th Street. It's in a, a like a three-story private dwelling, right? Place is raging. It, it's raging, right? So we p- put the fire out, and there's. It turns out the place is uh, uh, the guy in the place is selling crack, right? This is right in the beginning of crack when when crack it just crack. came. Yeah, yeah. When it just came into the city, it's like prior Oof. to that, you had hookers that were down at Coney Island that were like professional hookers. They were yeah. like the real deal. They'd be out there at three o'clock in the morning in like a little mini skirt, uh, uh, you know, a, a tiny like in the skirt, movies, a tiny frilly. Exactly, exactly. Like you send them overseas and they take down any country that you needed. Just give them like a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> give them a pack of cigarettes and like some place to, to rack up, you know. And then Anything you want. Right? And then, yeah. And then they, you know, and then they turn into into crack hoes, you know. And it got a little, yeah, uh, it, it got, got a little, little sketchy. Little, but yeah, it got a little crazy. But so, um, so it turns out that the place is a, a it's a, I can't, how do you stop these things from banging? All right. Um, so it turns out the play, the guy's selling the crack at a place. And I guess the lo, lo, you know, the other crack dealer, whoever, whatever was going on, they gas the place. Guy's on the second floor. He never makes it out. Makes it to the window. It's my first roast. Right. So. Really? Yeah, it's my first row. So the guy is like, you know, he's in a pu- uh, the pugilistic position. He's, yeah, like, yeah. he's all he's all spilled out and everything. He's right. burnt up horribly, right? So we're now, I think we're second to truck, and we're waiting for the coroner to come because back back in the day they gave you canvas body bags. They didn't give you, you know, you don't have the plastic ones now. So uh, because like Coney Island, between Coney Island Creek, getting all the floaters out of the creek. And uh, and how many people that you get from the the trunk of the car that was you know you got a car fire you go to open the trunk there's a guy dead yeah. in the trunk yeah yeah but this was my first like real roast like this guy was he was gone right so we didn't have a body bag so waiting for the car to come so we we're we're, we're there we got to be there they got the, you know those big like bug eye lights that they used to have with the the big fat cord <laughs> right yeah and the bug eye we got how many lights you got we got one. You know, yeah. so you run the big bug eye light with the cord, and it's like shining up the hallway so nobody falls out. So with this, the guy's got like three or four pit bulls up there, right? Oh my God. And all the pit bulls, are, they're all roasted, right? They're roasted that, that the, the lips are gone. So all you oh. see is like the dog, the dog is stiff like this, and the teeth are out like that. So <laughs> I'm upstairs. I'm like, oh, fuck it, right? I'm upstairs. I'm like, I, I got this. We're setting up everybody. So. I'm I'm in the back. I'm in the back, and I grab one of the dogs and I hold them like this under my arm, like this, right? So guys are coming up and, and they're going downstairs. And I think it was Jack Ronaldson says, "You know, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go get like Joey. I'm gonna bring him up." I say, "Oh, you gotta see this. It's in the back room. It's amazing, right?" So I'd be waiting in the back room, and they come up with the flashlights. I see them coming with the flashlights, and all you know, all I have to as soon as they turn the corner, I come out with the, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> he was screaming, screaming like 
Pissing in that pit. Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the dead dog story from Coney Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I had to get like. I had to wait there. I had to do something. I was bored, so we had to get like fifteen people. Con wasn't named Elmo, was it? Oh! oh! Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a true yeah. story. You can't make it up. Dude. No, you can't make that shit up. You can't nope. make it up. All right, so moving on. Go ahead. Where are we, Coops? Let's go to East New York. Let's go to East New York. We're traveling across the borough. Pitbulls with their the lips borough. roasted off. Moving on. Yeah. Come on, we're traveling we across the world. Keep up, place. fellas. Keep up. Let's oh, go. Man. I heard they got a couple of flyers over here. He transferred to a, what was that, uh, 10, uh, a tree. 103, right? Never heard of him. Poster. I was supposed to go to 113. <laughs> Your second choice, 103. Correct. <laughs> you couldn't get either one as, as shitty as it gets. Yeah, but, you know, when you come into a place with – Oh, we were you, oh, we were the second choice because right. you know that you don't get yeah, you know you can't get away with anything on this job. Remember, I said I was my own. Oh, remember, yeah. I said I was my own like worst enemy. Yeah, right? oh my yeah, God. yeah. So, so I, I see. I, I get the order. I go, oh, man, this is not going to be good. No, it's not. Gonna it's be not going to be good. So we go to one hundred three, and it it is like Louis. I don't know when you were there. But I was there that were like, uh, now these guys were, they were hard charges, these guys. These are like, so I'm coming from Coney Island where it's like, the guys are a little bit laid back. They can do the work, right? They can do the work. It's a different animal in East New York, bro. It's a different animal. <laughs> Who'd you have over here? Like, Gary Hoeing over there? Uh, Gary Hoeing. I, I had, oh well, let me God. see, let me see. I wrote this down. No, wait, 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 wait. wait. Holy uh, mark. Uh, Luigi. Oh, oh my God, Luigi. you had the Luigi. Yeah, Ready, Romeo, oh Ira Trout, Dave oh, shit. you know, uh, you know, he, th this whole crew, right? Hi, this I'm Billy like, Walsh. Yeah, yeah. Hi, hi, how you doing? Oh, hi, I'm Bill, and choice. you're my second choice. <laughs> and yeah, Dude, exactly, guys, exactly. It's like, oh, razor, like it's like knives when they talk. It just yeah, cut, you know, it should have been like this. Hey, listen. I'm really supposed to go to 113, but uh, I'm coming here, right? Uh, I would never say that. I'm not that no, stupid. Those guys, those guys it, it, it comes out. You know, yeah, it, it has to come out. There, there's no secrets on the job. Oh, it's going to come out. So, <laughs> it, but that place was like totally different. Like the only thing standing on the block was the firehouse. Right. That was, was it. Two houses across the street. That was it. Yeah, and the two houses across the street. That's the first time I saw like people. I said, why are people walking down the middle of the street? So they don't get sucked into the building. Like nobody stops at any lights here. This it's is like it's all brick farm. farms. This is crazy. <laughs> you know, this is and then and then like this is crazy. And then like I'm I'm sitting on the ring with Joe Trezor. I'm looking around. I'm like, it's two thirty in the morning. The nicest guy. He he he's the nicest guy. Joe Joe's the, he's a sweetheart, no, right? He's a sweetheart. But, yeah. Two thirty in the morning. It's like it's like. It's like, wait, why is everybody out? It's <laughs> Tuesday night. Out. It's Tuesday night. Yep. This kid's on big wheels. What's going on here? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so, the ghetto, bro. So. <laughs> Classic hood stuff. Any, so. Anywhere from 7 to, like, 1 or 2 in the afternoon, it's like a fucking ghost town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 3 in the morning, like, this kid's on big wheels. <laughs> yeah, oh and then, yeah, and then 2.30 2 in the morning, it's like on a big wheel, out barbecuing, who's fixing the car. You know, it's crazy. So, um... I'm there and I'm working with a great bunch of guys. And that was like, it was a, it was just a, a, a whole change of, of scenery for me, you know, where I came from. All right. You, you know, you had the can, you sat here, you know, this is what we do. This is why we do it. That's how you do it like that. And like, you know, I, I, I get up, I get there, like we, we got to run. It's like, well, you know, or like before I'm, I'm like, where, where do I sit? What do you want to sit? <laughs> Okay. Where do you want to sit? Yeah, get on Where the rig. We're all going to the same place. Don't worry about it. You know, but you'll figure it out. So it, it was, it was, uh, it was good. I was there for booze and bullets. You remember that? Uh, that Allegedly. Uh, yeah. Ale well, 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 well. Well, listen. <laughs> it was. There was one of the who who retired. Poser Frank Poser. I think it was it Frank was. Poser. It was Frank Poser. Frank Poser retired, and Frank Poser was a legend, man. Legendary guy. So Poser's retirement party at the firehouse, right? There was, I'm going to say, everybody on the rig was sober. 
almost. <laughs> not everybody. Allegedly. There was one. There was one maybe person awesome. that might not have been. I don't know. It might have been questionable. Allegedly, but whatever. But uh, um, allegedly, it was. It was. Uh, we didn't do anything. One of the guys, his brother-in-law, whatever, Brian, whatever, whatever you know, held up a grocery store. You know, with a one hundred three shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh so, my yeah, God. yeah. Yeah, and that was that was the first place where ever you know the uh, Meridians on the median on Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah, were they still doing that when you were there, Louis? Yeah, yeah. Just drive right over the median oh, right at 50 over. miles an hour. Sure, Atlantic Avenue, same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're in the rear mount, and you're driving down Pennsylvania Avenue, and there's a median in, uh, in between, like this way and that way. It's like this big, and I'm sitting in the rig, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to like big dummy, I'm going somewhere, I don't know. And and next thing you know, it's like, oh, like that. Like, did we just go over that thing? Like, I, you would never believe that you could do that. How do you do that? What, what, like, you would what never that? believe you what could go that over that. Magic? Thing. <laughs> that was magic, you know. Like, how did he do that? He just went over. So, I ended up, I was, yeah, exactly. So I was I was a chauffeur. I was a truck company chauffeur. So I ended up like driving. I think Mark Ferran was there. He was yeah, a, a was there. There. yeah. I, I ended up. Uh, uh, I knew Mark when he was a pro being in two, two forty one. No, two uh, some nowhere engine in, in Brooklyn. I used to hang out across the street. Um, but uh, um, yeah, I, I ended up driving there a lot, and you know, Alabama, Alahusha, Alabama, Libby, and, yeah. and the size of the freaking response area. It was like. You know, and and it's no messing around there. You got to get on the rig and go. And me being a chauffeur, I had no idea where I was going. Very probably right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, just keep going fast, keep making laps. Eventually, it's probably, yeah. You got you it surrounded in the right direction. We got it yeah, surrounded. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, and, and then like that was typical. Like you go out for five. I don't know when you were there, but you know, you go out five, six runs. You know, in a row. Oh, it was yeah, always, so. it, they were they were busy. Yeah, yeah, they were busy. Great firehouse, but. um it, while I was there, I think I was well, still in Coney Island. I had I had went over to Squad One and I talked to uh, Squad One about coming over because Freddie, Freddie, uh, uh, Freddie LeFemina was in 166 truck, and he went he left to go to to uh, um, Squad One. Squad One. And I, I was like, "Where's that? What's that?" I had no idea what it was. And then I went over there because I lived in Park Slope. I lived right, right in, in the neighborhood. Yeah. And mm. uh, I went over there and I, I, I interviewed with them. And then I was at, uh, I was in 103 truck and, you know, they, they called me. They said, do you want to come over? Well, and who that's, was the I, captain I, there at that time, Bill? Eddie Staines. <clears throat> Ed, Eddie Staines was the captain. And, uh, and I talked to, I talked to Steve Luisi about it because I was like, you know, I, I needed advice because here I am. I finally got to like, I was in Coney Island for eight years, you know? And I put in a I put in a transfer order, probably in seven out of the eight years, and I just never had enough points to get anywhere. So here I, I finally got to a busy place, you know, and I got a I got a really good offer. And Luisi said, "Well, you know, you're going over on a detail, right?" I said, "Yeah, you know, because at the time they used to detail you over for a year, right, right, and then right. you know if, if you pass the test and they they give you a stamp of approval, and." Um, I, I went over for, uh, I, I talked to Steve. I was like, you know, he says, you're going on a detail. He said, what's the worst thing that happens is you don't like it. Come back. Right. You know, you, you can always come back. And how I, I couldn't screw it up any worse than saying like, you know, you're my second choice. So, um, <laughs> You're already at the bottom. Listen, I mean, that, yeah. that guy's the man, too, right? I mean, that guy's the man. The bonus, is, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, he's, he's, he's great. He's a great guy, you know. So if I took his advice and I went over to squad one. So at the time though, right? Let's go over squad one. Uh huh. At, before they made the other squads, you guys just had what? First two boxes, and then first two fire boxes, and then everything else you were going on a ten seventy five, right? So you guys must yeah. Have been then then like most of the borough, most of the borough of Brooklyn. Yeah. So, so you had to be crushing the work. You had to be happy as a pig and shit. Uh, that, I tell you the truth, man, that's where, that's where I learned the job, you know, yeah. that's where like, it, it, it was almost kind of like, like I went to 242 engine and, you know, I got, I got my feet wet there and then I went to Coney Island and I learned like, you know, positions and 
know where everybody is and know, you know, all of that stuff. And then I went to 103 and then I, I learned that aggressive kind of firefighting, you know, where, you know, it just, it, it's all a real bunch of like really super aggressive guys. And then I went to squad one and they honed that, Yeah, you know, they honed that skill. They, they, they just like, that's, I love uh, uh, what I wrote this stuff down. Um, we, at the time we used to run on the radio. So we never ran on the, on, on the, uh, the teleprinter. It would always listen to the radio because uh, that was before they had MDTs in the rig. Right. So everything was announced. So if you heard a box come in, you know, they would announce the box and you could hear the box coming in on the radio and then you'd hear the bells come in behind it. Right, right, you know? right. And, and you'd hear ding, you know, ding, ding. And you kind of, after a while, you knew it was a job, you know. Right. So like, we were going out, we were out the door and maybe, you know, depending <laughs> on how far away you were going, we were halfway there before, you know, before the the, the teleprinter went off. Right. You know, and, and, and that's where um, there's some great guys there. Um, who was there when you were there, man? Who's well, like, yeah, uh, Kevin Williams, Scott LaPedra. Kevin uh, Williams, Mike, right. Mike LaRusso, uh, um, then there was uh, Kenny Pogan, uh, Jimmy Brogan. Um, let me see who else is. Uh, who, uh, are the boss, who are the bosses there, Bill? Cataldo was, uh, Sonny Cataldo was a boss. I think when I was there, John Sacco was a, a lieutenant. Uh, and John Fox. Uh, Johnny Fox. He, Johnny Fox won the Gordon Bennett at uh, World Trade Center 1. Right, right, right. The first yeah. one. That was but, so, Kevin Che, yep. Yeah. So I went, I, so I get there. Now, I, I interviewed with uh, uh, Eddie Staines, right? So Eddie Staines was the, the, the captain at the time. I think Ray Downey was the first captain. And then they had uh, a succession of, like, really top, top-notch top guys there. And I interviewed with Eddie. But Sonny Cataldo was, like, the guy there. You know, he was, he was lieutenant from day one in the squad when they formed it. So right. I get to the squad. Here, my my, I'm my worst enemy again, right? I get to the squad. <laughs> I'm there. I'm in like group 25. And right? at the Bill Walsh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the Bill Walsh, right? So Sonny calls me up to the office. Now, Sonny is the guy that runs the place. He's going to be there after all the other captains are gone. Sonny's still there. I sit down and I'm like, He's like, so what makes you want to be here? Because I, I was still detailed. You know, what, what, why do you want right, to be here? Yeah, what, right, right. what are you doing here? Whatever. He's giving me the interview because I never I never saw, sat down and talked to him. I only saw, I sat down and talked to Eddie. Boss, right. He's giving me the interview, and I'm giving him the attitude like, hey, bro, who the fuck are you? I already <laughs> interviewed with the guy. <laughs> 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 uh, like like, he did the friends, wrong yeah. thing. <laughs> how to make friends. Uh, uh, once again, right? So... I mean, Kevin Williams, uh, thank you. And he did the wrong thing. Kevin, 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 Williams, thank you. Kevin Williams wouldn't talk to me for like a year. He would just really? suck, you know, sit in the kitchen and just like <laughs> suck his teeth looking at me like, who's this guy? Yeah. You know? And, and, and it was just, but, but, we went to a lot of work. <clears throat> a lot of work. We, used to, we, used to, we wrote American La France, and, and I loved that rig. Uh, we'd go f- uh, from fire to fire, and it was just a normal thing to we'd be going to a job lights and sirens and the rig would just kind of pull over and the chauffeur would knock on the on the on the glass and say go put the wheels down because the rear wheels used to get so hot that they, they <laughs> oh, the were on fire yeah yeah it the was on fire. Burning. yeah 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 so you get out of the rig you grab the can, the can. you put yep. the wheel out you know that's <laughs> it you get put the can back get back on the rig and go to the fire you know, this is uh, uh wow, the rig wouldn't stop, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't, too hot, they wouldn't stop, they would just get too hot, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh how'd you get you along know, with Rescue uh, Two back then? They were, we used to go up and they used to sit in uh Grand Army Plaza and their battery would die, so we'd get a call like at three o'clock in the morning, can you come up and, and jump us? But they were like, you know, it was fine, it was they had they went to more uh battalions than we did. Right, like you know, we we'd run in with them, but it was you know it, it when you're working, it really doesn't matter if no. there's if there's enough work. Hey, listen, every time I ever found myself really in the shit, I turn around and there's nobody there. You know what I mean? So it, it, there's like there's fifty guys on the stairs, 
and then there's one guy in the fire room. You know what I mean? So <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, yeah, allegedly. So we never really, we never really had problems with them. You know, no. we, it was, it was fine. Question was, um, what the hell was his name? Who's the guy who works for Morning Pride now, uh, Louis? Oh, Bobby West. Bobby West was he there when you were there? Bobby West was there. Uh, um, probably the, the. This was a place where. It was always a competition. It's always like if we're going to a fire in a Queen Anne, it's the inside team. Who's going to get into the fire first? How you know? And and we get off the rig and we'd be like you know going. There's there's a rear stair. There may yeah. be a rear fire escape. Who's going to take which way to go to get there, may, there first? Yeah, there may be somebody might have you know <laughs> throw, thrown a thirty five in the back. Somebody may run up the interior stairs. You know, somebody may take take out the ballasters that go around the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, do that to walk it, all the time. Some, yeah, somebody would go. Somebody, you know, you get upstairs and then you go into your joining room and go through the wall. You know, so there's always like, who's going to get there first? And Mike Larusso was. Oh, I remember was, Mike. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Larusso, God rest his soul, right? Was always the first, the best fireman I ever met. Is that like, right? Yeah. Like, could never beat him. Could never be, and plus these guys had uh, they were they were the only ones wearing bunker gear, you know. I was still three quarter boots and and and, uh, and a canvas coat. All right, so they were they were so, they were a little bit heavier. They were a little bit slower. Supposedly. No, no, no. They were they they could actually go further. Oh, go further. I got what you said. They saying. could go All further. Right, go the other you way. Could, you just it. couldn't. You couldn't. You know. You could. That's why, like, people bitch and moan about the bunker gear. Right. I was like happy to get bunker gear because these guys were like, you know, they would button up and right. they they go, go places where places you just couldn't get. Right. I you, know, you just couldn't get there. I know it is like the downside of it, you know, where, you know, you can't feel the heat and all that kind of crap. That's the idea. You're not supposed to feel the heat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, about- yeah, that was uh, three-quarter boots up. You know, always pull your boots up, not like, you know, running around with like, you know, cowboy boots or anything like that. But, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was like who can get there first. And, and, and you know, they had, they had great life lessons. Like, you know, never, never critique – a company or never critique a job while you're while you're there because you know you don't know who's listening one and two you weren't there five minutes you know five minutes before you don't know what, what, what you don't know what happened before. right 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 so if you got something to say you want to say about it we'll say it back on the rig we'll say it back in quarters we'll critique the job and say you know like what, what do you think happened to the first or second new engine or this or that but you never like you know never said a bad it's thing a Monday morning quarterback, right? Yeah. Where right. And, 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 oh, here's, here's another thing. You never walked out of the building. Like, you see guys walk out of the building. Like, I got to do this. You see guys walk out of the building. They're like, they're walking out of the building like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like this. <laughs> they told, you know, in that, they said, never walk out of the building where they could see you. We go, don't, don't talk on the radio. And, and like hide go behind the, the guy. Yeah, don't go yeah, out there's, the yeah, there's, there's, there's four guys walking out. You can walk out behind them like that. Nobody nobody ever has to see you. You know, that's so, so that that's just stuff that you you know, like you know. <laughs> Did you uh, wait? Were you yes. working um, the uh, the Williams fire where, where uh, Williams pe- passed away in Rockaways? Did did rescue? Uh, did Squad One respond to that? I don't know. I was covering in the fifteenth at the time. I was covering in the 15th and the Rockaways were part of the 15th division. And the night before or the day tour before I sat because I know, you know, because I came from uh, working with Kevin. Right. I worked with, uh, I think his brother's name was Jimmy, right? Jimmy Williams. It was, it was Jimmy, right? It was Jimmy so, Williams. Yeah. I worked with, yeah. Uh, oh, I worked the day tour or the, I think I might've worked the day tour before the 24 before. I don't know. With Jimmy and we were just hanging out and talking and you know having had a good time just shooting the breeze about like race cars and stuff. Oh, and he was, he, a big he race was car yeah, man. yeah, yeah. And then, and then he was dead later on that day. Or that yeah, night. The only reason I remember yeah. is because Squad One came to when I was in two ten, and I, I think a couple of guys came from two ten. I don't know, and mm-hmm. um, and they gave a drill on what they saw and stuff. And that's the first time I even oh. knew what the hell the squad was, and I was like. At that time, I was like, that, that's He got stuck in the hallway, right? He got stuck yeah, yeah, in, yeah. A, in the dead end hallway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, that's yeah. that's where I want to go someday. You know, I saw, and I just remember um, the guys, 
like we were talking about, what's his name from uh, Morning Pride? Um, I got Bobby West. Yeah, Bobby West was Bobby working. West, yeah, with him, yeah. And a couple other guys like, oh shit, these guys are cool as shit, man. I want. They I want were. They work. really knew their shit, man. Yeah. They really, yeah. they really knew their shit. They were like, yeah. you know, all the little, like, you know, like the little cheats, man. How you get to places? How you do this? How you know if there's ten guys on the stairs? How you yeah. get around them? You know, go to you know, go to the adjoining the adjoining apartment. Yeah. Yeah, go out and come back, you know, go over, come down. You know, it's always a, a different way to get there. And they, they had all those tricks. There was, I, I had a job, I was in 103. I had a job uh, on July 4th. I was in 103. This Just Kevin Williams brought, the, you know, uh, Jimmy Jimmy Williams brought this up. He got stuck in the hallway when a, when a door opened or something like that, right? Yeah, he was Didn't at the he, end of the hallway. Something happened where they lost the yeah, door, I believe. They lost the door, right? I was at a job uh, um, in, in 103. Where it was in one of those, uh, um, what kind of uh, fireproof, uh, uh, multiple dwelling project, like the six, you know, like the six, six story project, you know, where they have the whole cluster of projects like that. Yeah, they had the pink houses, they had all those, yeah, 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 like that. And, uh, um, we were there, it's like on the third floor, and the fire, we had the fire apartment, forced the door open, and all of the fire just went right down the hallway into. <laughs> Two rooms, and you could actually walk like a gentleman, walk down and walk to the and get right to the door and like kind of look in the room. And it was all like the whole entire room was was ripping, was cherry all around the outside, and all the fire was going out the window. Hmm. But if you lost that door behind you, yeah, you were toasted be, in yeah, about yeah, 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 and that's when. That's when you know that wind driven fire kind of thing started like happening. Really, you know, right. and that's before it was ever like ever brought Talked up. This about, is just right, something, right, right. This is just something that happened to me that I was and I was like, Oh, look at this, you know, how much the wind is affecting this thing and how much you gotta control that door at the apartment. Because when I came back out, I was like, you know what? If this thing just it didn't close because it was getting sucked, you know, all the all the air was getting sucked from the hallway. But if that thing for some reason slammed closed, all of that crap that was in there was coming right back in you yeah. know and that was after the fact that i thought about that i was like all right now you, now you, you you know you just learned a lesson that you didn't get killed but guys you know guys unfortunately guys yeah, got you killed think you're like going that. into a fireproof you think uh there's not much to worry about right i mean yeah yeah but, yeah but uh, just the just the direction of the wind and yeah. i know they you know made studies you about that but last week with hank and steve like this job will humble you and in a second, you know, anything can change. It can oh, be yeah. something that's oh, not yeah. in your control and it changes. And it, 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 it's crazy. Um, squad one, another squad one story. Let me see. Uh, okay. Oh, here's the story. So I'm up in, I'm up in, uh, I'm up in Toronto. I'm playing at the international firefighters hockey, uh, hockey tournament. I'm up there with the uh, New York city fire department B team. I couldn't make the A team. Sorry. Uh, so <laughs> you got to know some people. I, no, you had to you had to have hands. I didn't have hands. You didn't have the hands. I skate, no. but I didn't have hands. So I'm up there, and it's World Trade Center one, and where they bombed the World Trade Center. So John Fox, he he got a Gordon Bennett for going in the hole because mm -hmm. you know Shea was in the hole, mm -hmm. so he went in the hole. So I come back. I come back from there, you know, and we're talking and I, I, I grabbed Fox on the side. I said, Hey John, like, you know, what happened? Because where, where, you know, what, the way I was brought up, it's if you bring, you swing, you know? So if I'm <laughs> carrying a rope, I'm going, there's, there's no way that anybody else is going. I, I brought the rope I'm going on. It, right. So I, I, I say, John, what happened? Like, I'm kind of pissed off at him. Like, why is the officer sliding in the hole? And, and I don't know if you ever met John Fox, but he, 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 he looked at me, he said, Billy, he said, you know what? I looked around and I saw that I was the one with the least amount to live for. <laughs> no shit. And he was deadpan serious. <laughs> so I took my tail. Oh, and put it right up your ass. Right back between my legs. <laughs> and I walked away because from what I understand, like you talked to him later, it was like crazy, you know, you know, to go in the hole. It was like, he yeah, said, yeah, I didn't yeah. put my mask on because I, I wasn't sure how long I was going to need it. <laughs> and, you know, but uh, that's another squad one story. Nice. I wrote these things down. You, you got it when you get old. You know what I mean? All right, moving on.
All right, so 95, you get promoted, and you're covering yeah. back in the 15th. As Good a study group in squad one. Yeah. Who'd you have? Yeah. Who'd you study Good, with? Uh, uh, um, Freddie. Freddie had, uh, um, um, who else? Jeez, uh, let me see. Uh, Neil Farrell. Neil Farrell. Uh, who was the other kid in... Had two other like real smart guys and me. And they dragged you along. They dragged you over right along. Yeah. I, I, I used to they used to call me Marbler because I'd be like marbling for an answer. So they ask you a question, I'd be like, uh what's second do? Uh, I don't know. First two. First two. <laughs> You're marbling. You're marbling. You're marbling. Um uh yeah, so I got promoted. I got promoted uh uh in, and I, I luckily like back then, you had you you couldn't go into the same division, so I was in uh, sock. sock, right? Yeah, there you go. Look at that guy. Yeah, look at that guy. I was <laughs> in sock, so I went to the fifteenth. I went to the fifteenth. I covered in the fifteenth division, which is it was nice, right, like right around the corner. Yeah, I, but I would ask you what month did you get promoted in ninety five? Stayed in the borough of fire. Do you remember when you got promoted? What month? June, June of ninety five. All right, and then, maybe May, uh, May or June. Some I, it was like May or June. So you weren't bouncing that long, and you got you got the spot in two eighty. Well, I bounced around. I bounced around the fifteenth, which was like I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I, my like my second tour in. I was working in one seventy five truck. Uh, basically, you know, I'm a I'm a Johnny Lieutenant. I go in. All right, guys, you know. Who's riding where? Let the guys make up the riding list because they know who, you know, right. who works there. It's a tiller rig, and we we go out at like uh, uh, like three thirty in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Go to a stuck elevator on Alabama Avenue, and I got my end through. The only thing that was on the block was like a Chevy van. <laughs> the front part got through. The back part, apparently, the guy driving the back was not that experienced. Uh. So he flattens this Chevy van, right? We're going to elevator emergency. Somebody's stuck in the elevator. So we get to the building. It's right down the block. You know, we, we flattens the van. Right? I mean, it literally runs it home, right? So the elevator's right down the block. I said, oh, you know what? Look, look, we ain't going anywhere. Let's go down the elevator. We'll get the guy out of the elevator and we'll take care of this, right? So we, we go down there. We get the guy out of the elevator. It turns out there's uh, PD on the scene, right? So PD was on the scene, right, PD? So yeah, um, <laughs> Petey's on the scene, right? So the, yeah, yeah. I, I tell the guy, I said, I, said, I said to the guy, I said, listen, bro, you see the van down the block right there? And he looks at it like, yeah, yeah, I can see it. It's fucking flat. This is a fucking tire track, right? <laughs> right? He said, I, I said, we just hit that. He said, eh, don't worry about it. He says, I'll write up the accident report. I'll bring it over in the morning. Okay, fine. So now it's 4.30 in the morning. We're under the L with four by fours. You know the the, the ladder on the back of the uh, of the tiller rig that you got to climb up like six steps to, to get in the seat. We're, we're back in the rig up with the four by four up against the post, straightening out. Trying the to ladder. straighten it out, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you know, this is normal operations. Absolutely, you know, no problem. So <laughs> go back to quarters. Yeah, go back to quarters. Uh, about I don't know, eight o'clock in the morning. I call up the the battalion. I, I say, listen, chief, but we had a, you know we had a box last night. At the uh, elevator emergency over here, yada yada yada. I said we we uh, we hit a van, but you know the police department's bringing over the the the, uh, the police report. Three seconds later, the chiefs in quarters. <laughs> oh shit! Really? Three seconds later, the chiefs in quarters. That's, that's He's like, we... so he thinks that I'm covering something up, like you know. Something happened, and I didn't report it, and like let everybody sleep so that the next day it's uh, you know you know whatever. So, Chiefs there, Jerry Dabrowski was the captain of the truck, right? Turns out I get a four day rip for not re reporting the. Uh, oh, this was like my really? third day. This was like my third day as lieutenant, you know. <laughs> so, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me because like it's driving a new car. When you drive a new car, you get a scratch on it. It's like ah, all right, fuck, all bets are off now, you know, no problem. So. <laughs> I had a blast. I had a blast working in the 15th. You know, I, I, I just had a good time. It was like, uh, you know, I knew the job. Uh, I, I could pretty much, like, I wasn't afraid to go anywhere. Um, you know, it, it was good. It was a good time. Did you work at 103? 
worked in 103. Yeah, worked in 103. Well, worked in, now. I worked in, uh, wait, where, where was I? I was in 107 truck. Right, oh. 107, That's South Bob Princiata, Zoni. Joe Downey's, Joe yeah, Downey's yeah, cousin. South Princiata, yeah. Yeah, God rest his soul, right? So yeah. I'm working in, uh, this is like maybe two weeks later. I'm, I'm working in 107, and, 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 and like Sal's got some, uh, he's got a, a female from out in Long Island. I don't know what she's doing, like, there. Possibly, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly, in the house watch, right? So we go out, we get a, we get a, 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 a box for, a, a, it turns out to be an oil burn, right? So we're back in, into quarters, and I look up on the ring, and... <laughs> The girl was on the ring. Like she took the box in with her. It's like back I'm like, I'm like, all right, no problem. No allegedly, problem, no foul, right? You, you yeah, heard allegedly, it happen. Yeah, allegedly, you, yeah. you heard so it happen. Now I'm, I'm sitting in the office. And here's another thing that pissed a lot of people off, right? I would not go in the office until I was getting paid for it. I don't care. You what well, you show me how to like fill out paperwork and fire reports? No. No, when you're paying me for it, then I'll do it. I'll figure it out myself. So I'm sitting in the office trying to figure out, like, you know. What usually takes, after you do it for a while, it takes you 10 minutes. I'm there for an hour. And, and, and typing, too, you know, <laughs> the old typewriter, right? So turns out that the captain was, a, like, a covering captain. He gave me up to the battalion. So I'm sitting in the office typing. It's, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, family and, friends. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and um, the, the captain, he kind of walks into the office like that. If you ever been in one, 107's office, it's kind of, you know, big. And then the chief comes in right behind him. It's like, uh, Lieutenant, uh, I understand that there was a female on your apparatus. I was like, no, there wasn't. <laughs> he, said, he said, yes, there was. I was like, no, there wasn't. <laughs> and I just, I held my ground. He was like, yes, there was. I was like, no, nope. there wasn't. <laughs> Allegedly. We, we, went, we went back and forth for about five minutes, and then like uh, – I, I, I grabbed Sal the next day. I ripped him in a butthole. But that's uh, yeah, it's a 107 story. Thank you, Sal. Yeah, God rest his soul. Did the right thing, though. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, did well, the right thing. Was just... <laughs> what was that, Pete? Pete? He, did... I was doing. It. I was up there doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> up there doing it. <laughs> I was doing. It. Nice. So when did, you get, when did you go to 280? Oh. How, did, how did you get the spot there? What would you do? 280 was – I went there UFO for Rock Newman. Rock Newman went over to uh, Iraq to run – he was the chief in, uh, the general or whatever in charge of communications. Uh, no Rock shit. Newman. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I did – yeah. I, I, I was UFO in his uh, – uh, Great guy, great guy. And uh, I was, uh, yeah, when I was in 280, I went to a nursing school full time, too. Yeah. Oh, you're a male nurse? Yeah. Yeah, a male nurse. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Fokker. Hey, Fokker. <laughs> you fucking need me to it, bro. I have nipples, Billy. Could you milk me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Rock Newman, well, it turns out that, uh, yeah, that's, con oh, so I, I did Rock Newman's, uh, I was UFO for uh, Rock's. Um, when when he was over in Iraq for like a year or mm -hmm. nine months or whatever it was, and then when he came back, uh, Carmine Regano, he Regano. retired. So Carmine, you know, I, I took Carmine's spot, and it, you know, I just stayed in the engine. It was like the next engine company over from two eighty, uh, from Squad One. Right, it's right. all rocking. You hit two eighty, <clears throat> right? you know. So you were still was, in Park uh, Slope. You still live there? Still in Park Slope. Oh, that's yeah, a home run. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and it was a great company. 280 and 132 was a great company. 249 was in quarters with us because they were getting their uh, their their, uh, oh, their yeah, apparatus floor done. done. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it was 249, 280, and 132. It was like no fun. No fun whatsoever. No. None. It was good. I w I just like you know I, I I hung out and just enjoyed it. It was it was great. Was, was uh, uh, Vinny O'Grady there when you were there? No. No, Vinny O'Grady came after. He's a bellowing idiot. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just slipped out. Again, That's your inside again, voice, Bill. That's the inside gonna, voice. It was going to be a thread. Yeah, yeah my inside <laughs> voice. I didn't get that one come out, did it? No, Vinny is a good guy. He's a big bellowing idiot, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a big boy, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the, uh, 280 was a great place. How, how long place did you stay there? Short time. I was there maybe... Uh, Two years. Two, two years, like a little bit more than two years. 
um, Jack Fanning from um, uh, yeah, Jack Fanning called me up and he asked me to come over to uh, Hazmat Ops. They had just started the Hazmat Battalion, and he asked me to come over to Hazmat Ops because uh, he knew I was a nurse, and you know, and um, I, I went over to Hazmat Ops. I started teaching you guys how to do uh, CPC. You know, I wrote the CPC program and yeah. and. No, put shit, you guys in those level A. Yeah, put you guys in those level A. Oh, thank you for race. It's a lot of fun, bro. Yeah, yeah hey, look, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I had fun. I had fun. Yeah, yeah. And I figured that was my way back into science. I do. I remember you yeah. covering around back then. That, yeah. We got yep. there in 98 in, in SOC. So that must have been pretty much around the same time you got yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Like right. Yeah, yeah right. Till the end. Uh, yeah. I remember it was, was, uh, it was you, Jimmy Amato. I remember, uh, yeah, uh, Portello, yeah, um, Richie Blinky. Portello. I remember all those guys, you know, like bouncing around as as bosses before, yeah. you know, when we kind of just started everything with the squad. Yeah, you know? yeah, trying to get, uh, and that was the only way I was getting back into sock. It was like, you know, I, there was nobody was moving, and and you had to be, uh, you know, you had to be somebody, right, to to get back in. That was the only way I got back in. Um, but that, you know, it, it was it was all right. I learned some stuff. They sent me to. You know, that was that was when I decided to leave uh, Brooklyn because uh, um, Jack sent me to the DOD after uh, 9-11, uh, not the DOD after the World Trade Center bombing. The DOD came, uh, Department of Defense came into New York City. They were going to all the major metropolitan uh, uh, areas and conducting uh, training on uh, weapons of mass destruction, chemical, biological, nu nuclear weapons. And he sent me to all of those seminars. And each one of the seminars that I went to, they had a, a booklet. And the cover of the booklet was uh, a picture of the World Trade Center and a target on it. And oh, shit, I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I could, see, I could see the World Trade Center from my house. You know, so I came home and I was like, hey, hon, we're moving. You know, and, and um, that was oh, in like 90... 97, I think, or something like that. I don't know. And, uh, and uh, you know, that was when we decided to move. We didn't move till maybe a year or so later. But uh, that was, you know, I was like, That's so this funny. is going I down. I remember that, bro. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Yeah. Every one of those booklets, like, I went for health and hospitals and, and transit and, and uh, you know, the water tunnels. And I did all of them. And every one of them had the trade center with a, with a target on so I was like, you know, maybe it's time for me to go. Mm -hmm. And then and then I started covering in in, in SOC. Uh, you know, I, I I they welcomed me back into the fold. And it was only it was only after I went to a uh, we went to a company party with uh, uh, Squad One. It was one of their anniversaries, and, and Ray was uh, Ray Downey was the original captain of Squad One. And you know, by that time, I had my you know I was married. I, you know, I had kids come and mm. so I was kind of settled down and then Ray let me back in because he didn't want, you know, the other guy. Right. <laughs> he didn't want that other guy. That other guy. That other guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then you guys all came around, you know, you guys would have, you guys, I, I loved you guys. I loved all the new squads. I, I love, I covered in, I covered in sock for four years. I remember and, that. I remember that. And I had, you know, they gave me opportunities to go places, you know, and, and I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't take them because, you know, it wasn't what I wanted uh, or I didn't want to pass like five special ops companies to get to this one, you know? So I, I didn't mind covering, you know, it was, it was probably, it was the best four years of my career because, you know, you'd be on the boats one day playing. Yeah. You, uh, could, you could yeah. do anything, right? Julie, be on the mat. Julie, the cruise director, you know, <laughs> yeah. we, we have a, we have a, a, a French soccer team here today. We're taking them out for a ride. And, and, you know, the, the vice president of Nigeria, he's coming and, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and so we do that the one day. And then, yeah. Yeah. It was great. And, 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 and guys, guys, and, you know, government officers, they were like, I'm not going to the boats, man. I'm not, you know, I'd be like three weeks in the boats. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. You know, it's like I get a well, ball. You know what I it is? It, it's your time, right? Car when, in, when, I fix my yeah. car. I be waxing it every day. You know. Well, you it's, need a again, it's when yeah, it's your yeah. time, right? If you just got, you know, you're coming back, you want to just, you know, you were already kind of past that. Yeah, you want to go to fires, but 
Yeah, yeah, now you're yeah, enjoying okay. the you job know, for what yeah. you can uh, take out of it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, you know, I, I might miss it. Tomorrow I'm going to be a rescue too. So I'll go work. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. I'll be a rescue too tomorrow. Right. Or in one or a hazmat one or, you know, whatever. You know, is it, or <laughs> here's the best thing. So when you're covering in sock, right? And and you so you call up the officer assignment desk and, and you say, oh, you know, sometimes you're in between vacations or whatever. And you always, your group number changes a lot. So you always get pushed a couple of days here, you know, a day here, whatever it is. But you, you'd be looking for a spot and they say, I, uh, we don't have a spot for you yet today. You're going to be SA, so call me. Then, then you would go, no, then you would go like citywide. Then you go into the citywide pool, Ooh, yeah. right? So every battalion and every, divi every division, every battalion, they would take care of all of their offices and there'd be one firehouse left. I've worked in every shithole firehouse <laughs> on the job. I mean, like, you know, I, there's there's a firehouse in Staten, Staten Island. I got pigs and chickens at, at the at the thing, you know. So I think it was seventy eight truck. We're first due. We're going through Camp Willie Pouch. I'm like, wow, this is like this is a fucking ten minute ride. It was first due, you know. Places in Queens, are like behind buildings. There's like there's if you go, you get there, then you you go around the corner. Yeah, a little further. Yeah, that's the place. Yeah, in there. Go in there. Like, yeah, right in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah, you're in like, there. Oh, no, 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 my no, house no. back here. Yeah. And then I go there, and, and like, you know, I don't have a front piece on. I have no, like, uh, collar insignias on or nothing. Right? You sit in the kitchen table, you know, have a cup of coffee, just like minding my own business, look around, you know, and naturally the guys will come up and say, hey, uh, hey, uh, where you from? Yeah. <laughs> and I, What's like, the only two things that matter? <laughs> where did you work and how much time you got on the job? That's wait, it. Nobody gives wait, a shit about wait, anything else. And I, I, my gear is outside, so they don't know, right? So I, I'm like, where, where you from? Uh, you're going to have to help me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> to look at you like that, you know, you're going to have to help me. Well, what, what, what do you mean? I, dude, I've been in the Marine Division for the last eight years. 17 years. I haven't, yeah, I haven't, dude, I haven't been to a fire. I, even before that, I, listen, you're going to have to help me. If something happens tonight, you're really going to have to help me. Uh, don't worry, Lou, we got you. <laughs> I could see you breaking everybody's balls all the time. No, no, it wouldn't happen. Me and Elmo. Nah, what are you talking about? Oh, 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 oh. oh no. I just sneaked that one okay. in on me. I saw how fast that was. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get back on. So you're covering in sock right. again. 98. You, in 2001, you wind up UFO in 252 as a lieutenant. UFO in two five two. Steve Rossweiler calls me up. He says, "Listen, Billy, I, I'm, I, you know, I don't, uh, I don't have any. Uh, I got a couple of officers out or whatever, and you want to come down and, and you know, come UFO to two fifty two. I was like, absolutely. I had worked there when it was engine two fifty two. So you know, I, I uh, there you go. Uh, it was engine two fifty two. I'm working there. Um, I hung my radio on the side mirror. Uh, I was Johnny Lieutenant." Took a box and came back. The, the radio was gone. I lost the radio. Woody McHale says to me. <laughs> Woody. Woody. Woody McHale says to me, says, hey, Lou, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it, right? So he goes, he, I guess he went to the local bodega, you know, whatever. Put the word and, out. Yeah, put the word out. <laughs> At 5 o'clock, my radio was back. Uh, like he, he goes, hey, Lou, don't worry about it. I took care of it. Here you go, you know. He says it cost me twenty dollars though. I was like, all right, all right, yeah, let me let me pay you, you know, because I'm looking at a, a three day rip for radio. You know? I said, let me pay you. He's a big dude. He was a big dude anyway. Uh, right? Commissary, dude. commissary guy. He's a big dude, but yeah, yeah, big um, sweetheart. Yeah, sweetheart. So two fifty two, great company, Norton, uh, Tommy Zavakis, cheese man, um, the flip. cheese, yeah, 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 the cheese. Uh, the officers there, me, Timmy Higgins, um, um, you know, great place to work, man. Uh, you know, I, I told Steve I wasn't staying though because I had to pass like eight companies to get there. Right. You know, right, I said, right. I, I, you know, I'll stay as long as you need me, no problem. But, you know, I, I don't see myself staying here. I mean, it's not like for lack of work or the place isn't good or the guys aren't good or anything. Of course, no, anything. No, no. I love, it's listen, I loved working time. with you guys. I loved working with you guys. You guys were a bunch of young kids that were really wanted to do it. 
and you know you had skill you, you know you had you wanted to do it and, and it was i had i had more fun like um here 288 right because i covered in soccer for so long i covered for four years like I, it wasn't like i was going someplace that i didn't know anybody right so like ronnie geese and timmy wealthy were my two guys that i went to when i was in, in uh, 288 because you know i knew ronnie from before timmy was he was a he was a great kid uh who else was there? adam ran was there right adam adam Rand, there? joey adam hunter Rand, joe hunter brennan um, pete brennan Brent, pete, pete brennan you two guys um, Neary. Um, oh. you two guys neary we Hank, hank the tank we like to call him hank the tank, the hank the, <laughs> we, we went to a we went to a a, a, a job at uh LIRR, Metro North, or whatever it was, uh, like middle of the winter, went to a, a, a guy who laid down on the track and got run over by the train. So, you know, the, the body was here and we had to find the other part. The, you know, <laughs> and, and you just followed a spray yeah, in the yeah. snow, right? So we followed a spray in the snow and, you know, all right, we found him. You know, you know where you, know where you go under the L uh, Rust. It's LIRR. It's Rust. Yeah, yeah, you go under the bridge yeah. and you can go up and you go up on the track from there. Yeah. Well, we find a guy like you know three hundred yards down down from there. He, you know, he committed suicide. So um, 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 we find a guy. PD shows up. Now it's a recovery, whatever it is. We're walking away and there's a flash behind me. I'm like, no, no, you know, no, no. I turn around. It's Matt Neary. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. I, I do want to I say, come here, man. Yeah, so we're walking in the snow. I, if you want somebody to really listen to your whisper, you know, <laughs> and I tell, I say, listen. I, I, I like I, that I said, one. You I said, talk loud. I, yeah, you, you whisper. He'll listen. I said, man, uh, Ouija, if, you know, you guys don't know who that is. He used to be a, a, a old time crime photographer. I say, uh, Ouija, if I see that thing on any kind of website, Anywhere, <laughs> I'm gonna come back for you. I'm coming back. With, okay, okay, you okay know, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, you guys were great, man. You guys were like, you know, Dude, great to I, work I with. Always when I, work, when I work with you, I laugh the whole time. That's all I remember. Laughing the whole time we worked together. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the captain Dennis uh, uh, Murphy. Murphy, right? Murphy's big guy, right? Yeah, I remember. So, I already know exactly I'm where working. you're going. I remember this. Were you there? That night? I was on the stairs. I remember it. Wait, wait, wait. So, so it's it's me, Ungaro, Belisari, and and Murphy up in the up in the office. I think uh, Belisari worked in hazmat the day, that day to uh, Vinny. Vinny was my relief. Uh, somebody else was working in in hazmat that night. So the four of us in the office. Now Dennis is a squared away dude. He's yep. sharp, squared away. And at the time, he was doing something what. He was doing something with listening to the radio or something where ESU was getting the, the box. I don't know what exactly what it was, but he was making the guys like record the time that they heard the radio alarm. And and, and by the time the, the dispatcher, right, Dennis box, probably knows what the box. We were delayed, right? Yeah, whatever it was, right? Whatever was going on. And I'm up, I'm up in the office and I'm just sitting there with Vinny, uh, Anthony, and and and, and, and I'm like, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> just breaking balls. That ain't gonna work. You know, and just like just you know what? Nah, I don't. I don't see that working. You know, so I go I go downstairs to um to take my rig my my stuff off the rig. This, this and you know how tight it is. Yeah, you know how tight it is there. But you open the door. I open. I got my stuff by the by the officer's door. There's somebody putting their, their stuff on in the in, uh, in the cab behind me. So there's no place to go there. This you got this much between room between the two doors, right? Yeah. Dennis comes down the stairs like a charging rhino. <laughs> I was on the stairs. I remember that. I don't know. I didn't know what it was for. I didn't know what it was for, but I remember him. And he, you know, he didn't say much. But when he talked loud like that, oh no, no, he, he was, was not hot. happy. He was hot. Yeah, he and was all I happy. remember is like standing there by the coach going. There's no place to go. There's no place to hide. And, and, and you know, he came down. He was like, he was a little hot, but you know, it passed. 
Your pants are no big deal, that's boy. Funny, that's a big that. boy. Yeah, that's a big boy. I was a kid too, man. I was yeah. a kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just said, I sat, I just stood there like, all right, well, you know, whatever happens, happens. Take it. You know? that's it, right? Yeah, I got to take it now, you know. But mm. uh, yeah, I, I, they didn't kick me out of. Uh, they didn't kick me out of that. He didn't no, hold I, remember, me. I do remember that. That's funny you say that. Yeah, yeah. As soon yeah, as you were going to that story, because again, I didn't see him. Very calm, cool most of the time. He didn't say much. He didn't have to never say much. Never lost it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> never. But he was, he was, that's the, the, I think that was probably the most I've ever seen a man. Uh, like, no, no, no. The time that Timmy oh, Garrity, you know, it, it, Timmy Garrity left the saw uh, on the well, roof at a, <laughs> and, made, and made us go all the way back to the firehouse. Who, and he who knew was it. the other oh, officer shit. at the time? It was Vinny. Bella Timmy Sally. Kelly. Timmy, oh. Ke Timmy Kelly. Timmy Kelly. 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 Tim, yeah. yeah. Timmy Kelly. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. I managed. I managed to do that, you know. But well, you got that going. <laughs> so you got and, that going for you. Which and Vinny nice. yeah, was sitting behind him, going, "Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> you're right." You know, and I'm like, "Nah, it ain't gonna work. Nah, yeah. Yeah. That's the way it's done." <laughs> you don't tell me what to do with my fire. And you did the wrong <laughs> thing. Oh. <laughs> That is yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, and he did the yeah, wrong yeah. thing. <laughs> I got turned. I got turned out of 270 for being sassy. 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 Ray really? Downey said. Ray Downey said that Donald Mains, the deputy chief, said, "You sassed him." You did. Yeah, sassy. I was what did sassy. What did you say that sassed him? What I say to sass him? Yeah. Uh, we had a job allegedly in a, in a class A multiple dwelling top floor fire. And we showed up as a squad, and he was just being a dick, and he sent us to to the roof. So there was two saws operating on the roof already. Um, I went up to the roof um, with Donnie Schneider. <laughs> don't ever hang out with Donnie Schneider if you don't want to get in trouble. The wrinkly I was hanging out with Dude, that guy Donnie trouble file with that guy, bro. <laughs> I was hanging out with Donnie Schneider. I got thrown out cleans for this one, and. Uh, so we're up there, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to drop down and just go see where the fire was because, you know, these knuckleheads up there, they're cutting everywhere. They're cutting a hole over here, a hole over there. Top floor fire, you make a big hole over the fire. That's what you do. You know, those trench cuts, I've never seen a trench cut work. Never. <laughs> never seen a trench cut. We're going to trench cut. You know, it doesn't work. <laughs> make, make a big hole over the fire. That's where the fire will go, That's... and you won't have to chase it over to the B-wing, you know. Yeah. So uh, I go downstairs, and apparently, apparently somebody saw me downstairs, so after the fire, the guy grabs me. Says, "I thought I told you to go to the roof." And I said, "Yeah, chief. I went to the roof, and then I dropped down to the floor below to see where the fire was, so I could direct the men on the roof in a proper fashion." And he was like, uh, that's "Well, you know, answer. yeah, 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 yeah." And, and I said, "And, and, and that's what it, Lattice Three says. There must be a, an officer on the roof with one or two cells operating." And ah. that was that was it. So well, I was, I was, I just thrown out of queen. Yeah. I got thrown out of queen. Yeah. Sassy. We should have made that the word of the day. Sassy. Hey, I don't know. Sassy. I, you know, I guess because, you know, sassy. I told him that, you know, shut up. So, oh. in so many words. Shut up. Sit you down. Know. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> you got to get that one, Pete. You got to get that He carried me. So I, Carrie, I, I got he carried down. you. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got thrown out of Staten Island, too. You did? I, I didn't get thrown out of Island. I'm sorry you know to see a cotton here. I really you know, you know to the look. You know the look that you give a guy when he looks at you and he's scolding you and you kind of look at him like, Okay. <laughs> Like you'll never work in Queens again. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Ooh. okay, you know, all right. You got me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just lost the borough. That's a little sassy. <laughs> That's a little sassy to me. I don't know. Bro. All right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Right, so you um, wind up staying at two fifty two and get promoted out of there? Is that what happened? No, 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 no. I, I was there for I was there for um nine eleven. Huh. I worked uh I worked at twenty four before, so I got off on Monday night, Timmy right. Higgins was my relief. Uh, um, I got off on Monday night. I hung around at the firehouse for a little while because it was raining. I had my motorcycle, and I didn't feel like riding home in the rain. I waited till about seven thirty. Uh, I jumped on a bike. I hit the corner. They were coming back from the wheel with the meal. I waved to them. Timmy called me a jackass for riding my motorcycle in the rain, and then <laughs> I rode home. And and that was uh, that was that. Wow. The next day was the next, beautiful. Remember? Was the next gorgeous. day was a uh, 
I, I, the whole ride home was like a torrential rain, you know, fall, you know, rainstorm. I almost stopped at 288. I was going to stop, you know, because I, I, I could stop anywhere, you know, a bar, somebody's clothes, whatever it is. And something just told me to keep going home. And I went home. Hmm. And, uh, and the next day it was, uh, you know, it was different. Uh, yeah. One of those dice tosses, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like Bobby Gallion said it right. We're all victims of the chart. That was pretty smart. You know, uh, and saying, then, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, and then uh, cheese, cheese, cheese told you the wimpy story, right? Jeff, Con Jeff Conroy, Jeff Conroy's dog, the, 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 the dog in the fire. Jeff Conway. Conway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, Jimmy the dog was like, <laughs> Karen. The dog was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's all we had, Karen. <laughs> the, dog, the dog was like, like a day from dying, like a breath from dying for like months. And we'd come in and say, Jeff, it's time. Put the dog down. The dog would be like like this. And and he just would never do it. So I think it was probably like maybe three or four days after the trade center uh, when we finally, like, we kind of came back to quarters. We kind of regrouped, came back to quarters. And we, everybody was sitting on the apparatus floor. They had a couple of tables there. Stevie was there with his wife. There were some wives there and stuff like that. And, uh, um, um I, I got this brainstorm. I went up and I got a, a I got a, a pillowcase and I put a red cross on the pillowcase and I put uh, a rescue dog on it. And I brought I brought the pillowcase down. I, I put on Wimpy and I said we're gonna we're gonna get Wimpy on the cover of Time Magazine because we're gonna take him down to the Trade Center, get him on the edge of a hole and just kick him in. He'll be the first dog. He'll be the first dog that got killed in the Trade Center. Yeah. Yeah, line of duty death for Wimpy. We'll take care of, you know, two stones, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Wimpy's going <laughs> in the hole. He'll, he'll be a fucking hero. We'll just talk about, like, you know, well, he was there. He was searching for victims. And, he fell in the you hole. Know, he fell in the hole. She said it's the funniest thing I ever saw. <laughs> we laughed. We laughed. Uh, you know what? And, and at that time, it was like there was no laughter. But we laughed for, you know, everybody laughed for, you know, a while. It was just I think like, we had a picture of that, actually. Uh, did Cheese bring that on? Wimpy Does he have a picture of Wimpy? I, I, don't I know. think he did. No. I think he and, did. I swear uh, to God we had a picture of that. Yeah. 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 And then um, let me see. After the Rockaway plane crash, that's when I left. I went to uh, – I went back to Covering again. I mean, oh, like, what happened was that I went to uh, – um, I was in 252 – I was UFO, 9-11 happened. Then I stayed with the company for another like month, probably maybe, you know, three weeks or whatever. And then they assigned me to task force one right. at the trade center. So basically I was doing like night tours at the trade center and day tours in the firehouse. And it was just like, you know, I just stayed at the trade center. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had, I just never reported it to anybody. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, at that time, it was just a free-for-all yeah, anyway. Guys, radio, just like, I, yeah. I go watch people, and if there's something happened or, you know, there was extrication or something, then I go, you know, go mm. take care of it. Yeah. But, so uh, uh, um, you get promoted to captain, and they send you up to the 7th Division? 7th Division, man. 7th Beautiful. Division, yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah, I was, I, was, uh, I was up in the 7th Division. They assigned me to uh, – they made me UFO in 150 truck. 150? Is there a 150 up no. there? No, that's in Queens. Two, letters, two numbers. No, 50. It's two numbers? 50, 50 truck? truck? 50, 50 truck, yeah. I'm 50 truck. And they had the holy name, they had the holy name uh, uh, um, um, dinner, like down at, there's a, by 50 truck, if you go down the highway, there's a big uh, catering hall on, on, on the side. So they had the, the dinner there. And I went there, I, I took the truck there, I went to the holy name dinner. And I walked in there, and there was a bunch of guys from 48 and 56. They had, like, two or three tables there. And I think um, – I don't know. I saw somebody there. And the next day I was UFO in, um, in 48. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And you went back yeah, covering in soccer. How long were you, yeah. were you in – I was UFO in 48 for maybe a couple of months. It wasn't it wasn't long. And then I went back into soccer. How did you get you was, right back into soccer? Well, they needed people. Oh, okay. They needed people. They needed, yeah. you know, it was everybody. Well, you know, everybody else got killed. That's that's the I got back in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sock was decimated after. Uh, yeah, yeah, after. yeah. So, you know, it wasn't long. It, it went quick. It, you know, I got promoted and then, I, you know, I was in the seventh. And I was in the seventh, not long, maybe a couple, three months, maybe. 
And then I was back in sock covering. And then right after that, um, you know, they, they gave me 41. Ah. And the we difference running, between 41 and 1? Yeah, they were doing, they were doing the running. Work, for, right, that's work. that's a running. job at uh, Jerome Avenue. It was a cell fire. Mm. I lost my uh, uh, my alternate breathing device in there. Ah, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, well, I was I was in the basement in like you know eight inches of water, and uh, um, uh, somebody from the one of the trucks up there was screaming at the top of the stairs, "It's coming! It's coming!" And then there was another person with me that had a, a um, a camera and they were yelling, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And I was like, well, I'm not going until I find my uh, alternate breathing device. <laughs> you find it? Uh, no, <laughs> no, but I put the face piece on and I was like, you know, I was like, I'm not going anywhere. And then I just Went made somewhere. my way. I, yeah. I found a fire. I told the guy, you know, I told the, whoever was in charge, I said, we need a line over here. And we went and put the fire out. That was that picture with uh, 41. Yeah, it was a good job. Yeah, yeah that's, it, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah Who's over there? That's Gillespie, right? Gillespie on the right. Uh, Gillespie, uh, Eddie Walsh. Um, oh, my God. Who, who's on the left there? That's uh, what's his name there? Uh, Joe. Um, Beltrani. Joey, oh, Joe Beltrani. Joe Beltrani. And who's in the back? I don't, I don't Go Zoom out. Like, you know, zoom, zoom out. Maybe get clearer. Um, I'm not sure who that is, is either. That? Hey, you know what? Forty one's the one where uh, Cheese Man went up there and they shit on his French toast, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> no, he shit on the French toast. No, they yeah, shit. No, they, shit on on uh, they tried to freak him out and took a dump on the table right in front of him. He, he, he and he said uh, the shit. Yeah. <laughs> look, look. I don't know who the, the first captain. The second captain was Tiso. Then it yeah. was the shitter. Yeah, Tiso, <laughs> Blaine, Vomero, then me. So that's not a bad, you know. Spillane told me hold the wheel straight. Freddie, I, I I gotta thank Freddie for getting me there. Freddie, I think Freddie pushed to get me in in, in forty one. That was a, that was a good place for me because you know there, right? they were busy. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was a good fit for me. It was absolutely, you know, it, 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 I don't like being slow. Uh, you know, I don't mind running. Um, they they ran a lot. You know, the guys were. It's an old school firehouse. You know, just uh, um. You know, know your job, do do your job. And I was laundry morale up there, bro. That's basically what I did. I took care of morale and made sure the laundry was clean. Everything else was taken <laughs> care of. Clockwork, right? Yeah, You're yeah, yeah. I didn't have to, to like, yeah. you know, I didn't yeah. have to do anything to, you know, I just like like Spillane said, just hold the wheel straight. You know, yeah. and uh, um his story. So the senior what a senior well, the senior man up there. I'm I'm gonna leave him uh nameless. Um what happens? I wasn't there for this, but he told he tells the story. It's a pretty funny story. Um, what happened was uh, there was a, a cat got hit by a car in front of quarters. So it's in the summertime. There's a lot of people out, you know, and everybody's banging on the firehouse door. You know, there's a cat. There's a cat outside. He got hit by a car. <laughs> like, so, a cat so outside, like you know, yeah, like, there's a cat outside. I got hit by a car. So. Uh, I'll, I'll name the guy allegedly Bobby Delia, right? He, he opens the apparatus, he opens the apparatus door, he looks outside. The cat is like smushed, but it's still alive, you know? Oh, God. It, it's smushed. It ain't going to make it, right? So he looks at the cat, he goes inside, he gets a shovel, right? He walks out with the shovel, nails the shovel with the, the cat with the shovel, picks up the cat, walks over to the garbage can, over the garbage the can. can, puts the right. cat on. <laughs> Puts the can on, walks in the class, closes the door. So, you know, Mission up, done. That's it. Uh, that is it. And he did the wrong thing. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was uh, um, that was that's a that was a great place to work. Oh, I, 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 I immediately called the. Uh, uh, I immediately called Sean Genovese when I got the spot because there was a couple of openings, you know. And and I called Sean. I was like, I need somebody up here, like to run the run. He's a good guy, yeah. man. I yeah, worked with yeah, him yeah. when I was in sixteen truck a little bit. He was a lieutenant. Yeah, I still can't believe he's up there, man. I still he's still there, right? Yeah, he's still doing it. He's still there. Yeah, he's still there. He's fucking crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. They are well, running their ass off up there still. Yeah, that's <laughs> where you can't like. There's lessons in life. There's lessons like that, that you should know. 
Get don't drink 12 black and tans after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Right? <laughs> no shots after midnight. Don't mm. do it. Don't do it. <laughs> if you're in New Orleans for Hurricane Katrina oh and you're in like a tractor trailer, the back of a tractor trailer that's been converted into a bar, and the guy stands <laughs> on the bar with a handle of Sambuca and a rack of plastic cups, and don't it's your 50th it. birthday, don't, don't leave. Do don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. For the whole next day, every time we got a job, I was thrown up in my face oh. because I wouldn't let anybody see me throw up. But this Ooh, is uh, – yeah, so Those guys, you guys are going to work down there too at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of work. That's what men do, baby. That's don't why. do it. Don't, don't do, do it. it. If he says – if he says, welcome to the Buka Bar, oh, leave. <laughs> leave. That is the worst stuff. That's man. all I can say. Yeah. Uh, let's get into the but, good stuff now, all right? We're at okay. the 41. Let's get into the good stuff, Ruffy. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, I, Petey, you know what oh, we're talking uh, about. Petey, you know what we're talking about. We need the good picture, not the, we not the, the Hollywood we need pictures, the bro. Good we picture. need the good stuff. Give it to me. We want to make the women moist. Oh, what don't are we show talking about? I'm actually lost. Here. What I, are we talking about? Hide your wives and girlfriends. Hide, hide your wives. Oh, make sure you have. <laughs> you know what I'm oh. talking about. Oh. Okay, all right. Boy. So okay. here's the story. Hey, everybody, I don't hold on. Oh. 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 Yummy. Here's the story. Oh. 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 I'm paying oh. back. Oh. I can do that one. Hold on a minute. <laughs> oh, 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 the eyes. It's in the ice, Chico. It's in the ice. I do as your girlfriend. So, um, I came back at Daytona Rescue One, right? So, we're having lunch, and the phone rings. One of the guys there, he ended up being a lieutenant in 270, tall, blonde hair, um, horrible with names. Marmon? He picked uh, Dave Marmon, yeah, yeah. He picks up the phone. He picks up the phone. And he goes, hey, fellas, they're looking for a guy to play a fireman on TV. No shit. And, then, just like like, and he goes, anybody interested? And nobody says anything. I'm, I'm just having my lunch. So I'm sitting there eating my lunch. So we finished lunch. Well, we didn't actually, we didn't finish lunch. We get a, we get a job. We get, a, we get a run. And we go out for the rest of the afternoon. We get back to quarters like 630, right? Which is normal. That's, that's normal there. So, um, Clean it up. I, I asked Dave. He's in the house. I just say, "Hey, Dave. Well, you know, what what was that thing about the looking for a guy to play a fireman? Because I'll try anything once. Why not? Like I, I never went to an audition, so I just want to see what it's about. I got this, plan, right? So Holy he says, uh, he, he says, here's the number. Call the number. They're okay. doing it tomorrow. So I call the number. It's like seven o'clock at night. There should be nobody there. The guy says, uh, uh, yeah, come by tomorrow at like two o'clock. I said, okay. So I go home. The next day, it's a monsoon. It was a, a hurricane. I don't know which one it was, like Gloria or Helen or, you know, Bafungu, whoever it was. I don't know who it was. It was raining uh, like cats and dogs, right? Manager. Yeah, something, yeah. So it was raining cats and dogs. So I go, I drive into 57th Street in Manhattan. I think it's the ABC, CBS, something building over there, eight, uh, 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 57th and like 8th yeah, and 9th. CBS. And then. CBS is CBS. Yeah. So, um, so I go there and I, I, I go there and I parked the car, wherever I parked the car, I got to walk like two blocks to get to the place and I'm drenched and I'm late. It's like 2.30, the traffic was horrible, all kinds of shit. So I get there and and they, they get me into the office. There's a guy sitting at a desk. He hands me a piece of paper. He goes, all right, I'm I'm Jeff. Uh, you be Jeff and I'll be Jimmy. Uh, okay, so, uh, hey Jeff, yada, yada, yada. Um, look out, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, all right, all right, all right. No problem. Right. I'm soaking wet, right? He said, "Look out, look out Jimmy. What are you doing? To, what are you? Yeah, look out. Your job. Look out, Jimmy. Okay, look out. Look concerned, right? So uh, you got the job. <laughs> he goes. Right, he goes. What are you doing tomorrow? The, the next day. <laughs> wait, wait. The next day, I'm working at Hazmat. Right? Oh, he says, fuck. "What are you doing tomorrow? Can you go to like 15th Street and 10th Avenue?" Uh, tomorrow at like, you know, 11 o'clock. I was like, yeah, okay, no problem. I can do that, right? I'm working at Hazmat. We're city right now, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, I think the 
statute of limitations is over for this. You know what I mean? Oh. If you want to chase me, wait, tell me you're going <laughs> to get me in trouble. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm working. At, Dennis Carey is uh, the show. Oh, I love Remember that Dennis? guy, man. Yeah, love yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy. Dennis, right? Love so that I grab, guy. I grab Dennis. He's a sweetheart, man. I grab Dennis on the side. I'm like, Dennis, you gotta do me a favor. He says, What, what, what do you want, Billy? I said, I gotta be at 10th Avenue, 15th Street in Manhattan at 11 o'clock. He says, Yeah, no problem. We'll take a ride over there. Like, no worries. Yeah, no, no worries. So we get in a cab. We're driving over there, and and like. You know, we're, we're going to get there at 11 o'clock. And he says, uh, we, we pull up on the street and he says, uh, well, what are we doing? I said, well, you can't say anything. And I don't think he ever said anything. I don't think he ever said anything. <laughs> Took it to his grave, baby. Yeah, Dude, he was, yeah, a, he was yeah. a man's man. That guy was he a man's man. He never said anything, right? I he said, was. listen, I'm going for an audition. Like, you know, for an audition. He's like. All right, I'll be here on the radio. If anything happens, I'll call you. Right? I'll call you. Right, so, right. Yeah, I got my bunker gear on, my shirt, you know, the the, the, the radio. I walk up, I go, I, I get to inside the office, and it's a, a a big waiting room. Everybody in the waiting room was all like, they were like six two, black hair, muscles, blue eyes, beautiful men, beautiful <laughs> people, you know. And me, I'm walking. I smell like freaking smoke, whatever it is. So. I go, um, Jimmy, I watch out, to, it's a collapse. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, it's like, excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> right, so I walk up to the desk. I say, hey, listen, you know, I'm Billy Walsh. I'm here for the, um, the audition. Is there any way that, because I'm working, can you get me in like right away? Because, you know, if I get a run or something, I'm going to have to leave. I might miss it. She says, I'll, I'll find out. Go, you know, so she goes inside. That's About awesome. five minutes later, she comes out. She says, Mr. Walsh, can you come in? So I walk in, I walk in, uh, in in this big, like, big office now. There's one of those, like, huge tables. And there's, like, mm. 10 people sitting at the table. And me, I don't know nothing from hunger, right? But the guy <laughs> that I saw the, the night before, he's sitting there, and he goes, hey, Billy, how you doing? I'm like, I'm good, Jeff. How you doing? He, he says, we're going to do the same thing that we did uh, yesterday. Okay. Look out, Jimmy. <laughs> That's, that's it. Collab. That's, that's it. All you I go, said. Look out, Jimmy. I'm like, <laughs> they go, yeah, that's it. I'm like, hey, thanks a lot. I get back on the ring. I go to work. You know, that was it. That oh. was it. So, uh, like a week goes by, two weeks goes by. I, I'm working some. I, I think I was working 270. I get a phone call. I'm on the way home. Uh, my, um, do we have cell phones then? Probably, yeah. I, I don't even know. I'm, I'm not, yeah, I think I had a cell phone. What year? And a flip phone, probably 98, 99, 98, right. yeah, 99, yeah, we had I'm not a flip phone or something. Yeah. So my wife calls me. She's got to call this guy. I call the guy. It's, it's, you know, we like, we like what we saw. We were very <laughs> impressed with what you were doing. Um, Online. I just want, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we just, we, we, you know, I wanted you to know that, you know, it's, it, it, you got the job. And I was wow. like, I was like, all right, all right, no, no problem. And you like, still don't even know what you're really doing, right? You don't even know anything. No idea, no idea whatsoever. No oh, idea whatsoever. You lucky bastard. Right? Right. One job, I had one audition, one job. You know how people? It's crazy. And the job it ran for seven years. So, Holy seven years. Oh, now, 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 now. They say you got the job. They oh, say man. you know. Listen, you'll you'll be hearing from us, right? Okay, fine. So I call my wife. I say, hey, baby, you know, I, I got the job. She said, you know what? I knew you would. I, I knew you'd get it. But so they said they call you. Okay, you know. I said it's for the WB, baby. It's what you know. She said. I said it's like channel, channel nine. She says, no, you idiot. It's NBC. Oh. You know. So I'm like, yeah, okay. So now, move move ahead like a month, maybe a month. Uh, I'm working at 270. I get a a phone call from the second AD from Third Watch. Hi, my name is uh, Pippi Longstock, and I just wanted to, you know, you work in tomorrow. At uh, seven a.m. Come on! And, and, and like I didn't give you more than that. That's no, crazy. No, no, you're working tomorrow at like seven a.m. One hundred eleventh Street, and uh, you know, and in, in Amsterdam, uh, we need you there on set by by uh, by seven. I'm like, oh, they had called me. They had called me and said that they were going to call me and let me know that I was going to work, like I was going to be working. So it wasn't like totally out of the blue. But what am I supposed to do? Stop it, you know, stop living, stop going. Right, you're work. not gonna stop working so, that night, right? Right, right, right. right. So I'm working at 270, right? 
So they say, I got to be there. I, I said, look, you know, I, uh, you know, I work till nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get there at seven. Well, you, you know, you do the best you can, you know, try, try to do the best you can. So I call up Pete Martin, who's my relief. I call Pete. I, I say, Hey Pete, I, I need a favor. Now, you know how it works in the fire department. You ask me for a favor, I do you a favor. You do me a favor. Anybody ever asked me for a mutual? Pretty much, I was like, yeah. You know what? I got you. Don't worry about it. You, you got. You need to get out early. What time? Tell me. Pete says, "What?" The, he lived out like Riverhead, right? He says, uh, uh, "Is it what time you need me?" There? I was like, oh, "Like six. That means Pete's got to get up at like three to come in and get me, right? 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 He says, "Billy, no." He says, "Billy, no." We know each other for a long time. No problem. Says, Billy, no problem. Yeah. I right, got you. I got you, right? So I'm there. I'm like, things are working out pretty good. The only thing that could really screw this up is if I get a job. Job. Boop. Right? Oh. I get a J-O-B. Sure yeah, so enough. You're, you're nervous the whole night waiting, right? 5.30 in the morning. Ah, oh, God. First, first duel, Queen Anne, second alarm, place is roaring, right? <laughs> we get there. <laughs> <laughs> we get there, like you know, I, 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 um, get there. pop the front door, just blow the front door open. Engine set up to go go in. I I look inside. I look inside, and I can see the stairwell against the against the uh, what do you call it? The lath. So you can see the stairwell. The, it was burning on the other side, and the plaster had fallen off. So you can find the stairwell. I tell the guys that's the way. That's the way we're going. I run around the rear. To try and get in the rear, see if anybody's in the rear. We put the we put the fire out. We're standing there. Everybody's like full of plastic. You, you know, you're still steaming the whole nine yards. Who comes walking in the door? Pete. Martin. Pete. <laughs> oh Pete my Martin. God! You yeah. relieve you. You relieve you at the my job. Car, yeah, yeah. My car is up the block. Just take my car and no go back shit. to quarters. No yeah. brothers. And here's here's the key. Here's the keys. So I get in the car. I go back to quarters. Now I'm late. I don't have any time to do anything. I just throw throw my gear in the trunk because I'm still covering. I throw my gear in the trunk. I think I jumped in the shower. I jumped in the shower, jumped in my clothes, and and, and got to the set. I got to the set like at 730, show up. And, you know, I get there. and Oh, we gotta, we got to bring you to, to makeup. <laughs> all right, we're going to make that. All right, we got it. You smell like yeah. smoke. They really yeah, think yeah, we're yeah, like, oh, we got to bring you in the wardrobe. <laughs> I go to wardrobe, right? I got like, you know, they give me fire, fire department uniform. Then they give me a set of bunker gear. It's like brand new. Brand new bun bunker gear, like all stiff, you know, three sizes too big. I say, wait, you know, wait a second. Do me a favor. Can I, I, I got some stuff in my car. Can I go get that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, Use your the, own the, head, shit. The, the, the wardrobe guys, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, go get it, you know? And, and so I go, I go get my stuff from the car. It's like, it's got plaster all over, so wet, stinks. You know, it's just nasty. It was like, oh, yeah, you can wear that, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> the next 20 minutes, I see the guys are outside. They're taking the bunker gear and they're beating it on the sidewalk. Oh, trying, trying to make it look all yeah, 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 trying yeah, to make yeah. it all dirty. Trying to make it look like what the stuff I had on was. Yeah. But that that's a true story. That's you know, wow. that was my first day on set. And that's uh, you know, that was hey, the beginning got some of pictures uh, there, Peter. Show them some pictures. Yeah, yeah, it's always yeah. the case though that TV man, that that whole world will throw your whole life into a tumult, your personal life, everything you're doing. Well, it's always well, like that. Fun. Well, it was crazy because it's like here you are. I'm, I'm probably I'm I'm in my forties. I'm like forty two years old. I I put away that whole you know. Do they like me? Am I wearing the right clothes? Right. Uh, am I am, do I am I listening to the right music? Am I autistic? I put that stuff away in high school. You know. So now you got to open up that that trunk again and look at it. Yeah. And it could really it could really bend you out of shape. You know. But then you got to have a half a brain, and that's not my problem. Did you, so did you enjoy yeah. doing it? You must have enjoyed doing it, obviously. It was well, you know what? It was hit the line, hit the box, say the line, take the check, and go home. It was very interesting. It was a challenge. It's a real challenge. That's a post 9 11 What thing. was your uh, what was your character's name? My first character's name was Jeff Wilson. I was uh um there's a there's a piece of my first piece of film is with Kim Raver and and, and there's a um it's the look, look out Jimmy part. 
But um, <laughs> it's with Kim Raver, and we're in the street. We're in the street, and like, that. you know, Look there's, out, Jimmy. there's a ambulance goes by, and I'm standing, I'm holding a halligan. I'm like, you know, looking as good as I can. And she comes over, and she says, uh, Look out, who Jimmy. Else is, who else is missing, Jeff? Jimmy? And I say, and the new kid. Right, and it's my line, right? So they do it like fifteen times, right? Oh, I can't. So I, I, I know, like I know this kid, I know Jimmy's missing, but who is this guy Jeff? And where did he go? <laughs> Turns out that I'm Jeff. Uh, you're, you're Jeff. Jeff. The whole time we did the whole thing. I did the whole thing. I never knew I was Jeff. Hey, do so we like, have that? Do we have the video? No, no. Oh, I, I got I it somewhere. No, no, I think Petey, Petey might have got a little bit of a video. I got some, I got some, some of your finest work here. Stand by, hold on. It might, you might have it. Yeah. No, I do. Here we go. Let's go. Who else is missing, Jeff? Jimmy. My new kid. Let's go down to the fourth floor and break through the wall. I broke my arm once, junior high. Jumping off Frank Shaughnessy's roof. You jumped off a roof? Yeah, onto some old mattresses. I missed. <laughs> Frankie's sister was watching. Oh. It didn't help that I cried afterwards. Three's clear. I'm heading to four. It's way too late now. What's he supposed to do? Tell the chief no? Is anybody talking to you, Nieto? The guy's brand new. You don't let a chief make the whole squad look bad, proby or not. Who made you look bad? The chief grabs this proby at a tactical training drill and has him act like he panicked and took his mask off. You guys blew the drill? Not us. Acting Lieutenant Doherty. So I rescue him. That's what I do. Only he didn't need rescuing. The chief threw us a curveball. I've never known a drill to go like that. I've never known a boss to kill his entire crew at a job. I didn't ask for the job, Billy. You didn't turn it down either. Billy, leave the truck right there. Yeah, good idea, boss. Why don't you go tell the cops how to direct traffic now? Wait for Grab the hearse tool, pop the doors on the Volvo No, no, this is going to be easier. We got this. This is going to be easier. Stop telling us how to do the job. Billy. Just like the drill, Jimmy. Wrong place, wrong time. That lady OK? You know what? I was wondering a little more about your condition. What are you talking about? I was just trying to help you. I didn't need any help. Did I do something to piss you off? <laughs> wow. 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 You know, I don't think I could. I don't think I could do that, man. I don't think you know, I could do that. You know, you know the, you know awesome. the, the, uh, the black guy in in that uh, thing yep. is that's the that's the Black Panther from uh, what's his name oh. that just passed away. Come on, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's his first that job on film. Wow, that was his first job on film. I, I can't remember his name right now. Um, he he did the Black Panther. No, yeah, I, I got you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, name. Pete. Of course, yeah, I just don't forget not. the name. Hold on, I get you, I get you. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, when that was did you? Good, Bill. Let me ask you something, Billy. When did you? Yeah. Start to have fun with it. So, you know what I mean? Because there's that first day shit when you get on the gig, and then it's like, oh, you know, uh, you're maybe a little nervous. You don't know. You don't kind of know your place, right? You're trying to figure it out. When did you start to like relax into the job and know your role, and then just have fun with it? Did well, you make love it, to it's the camera? it no, it's it's kind of like look, it, it's like anything else. It it was a challenge because Chadwick Boseman is the guy's name. That's it. Chad, that, that was, was Chadwick Boseman. Um, it's like anything else. It's like I'm I'm always like I want to learn new stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I learned stuff in the fire. This was just a new challenge, and it's so different than what you think it is. And like instead of spending time in my in my trailer. Where you know, I, you know, I could hang out in a trailer. I would, I would sit on set and Locked talk arm, to, yeah. well, talk to all of the guys that were working, the, the the cameramen, the grips, the pullers, the lighting guys, and and these are the guys that like they, they, uh, um, it was like on set acting lessons because they they would tell me the puller would tell me, listen, we're gonna we're gonna be going like this with the camera. What I want you to do is just look from one side to the other, real slow. Just like that, and and we'll get a good shot of you, you know. And and that's what, and, and that's how you learn. And they knew that I was just a working guy, you know. I'm just, and I'm I'm with the working guys, and I, you know, the, the actors are very nice, but I, I wasn't really an actor. I mean, mm. until until it just like you know, I got my union card, and I, I didn't want to join the union. 
I was wondering, like, how much did join the union? Twelve <laughs> hundred? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and, and like people like Wait, trying what? to get to the union. Yeah, the whole time, and I, I just got, you know, they paid me. I got, uh, um, I got minimum plus plus ten to pay my agent. So I was just making minimum, which is still really, really good. I'm yeah, gonna say absolutely. It's really good, right? Absolutely. But, uh, but like, like every time I walked away. I, that was the last time I was going on film, and that was for seven years. Because if they tell you that they're bringing you back, you know, then you have like they, they got to give you a contract. They get you know they're going to give you more money. But if they every time you walk away, you may not come back again. So I, every time I walked away, I was like, all right, that's the last time I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then fortunately, I you know I did, I did a few movies. I, you know, I did all the Law and Orders. I, you did know, almost. I'm, 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 I did, uh, they, well, this, yeah, um, yeah. We gotta get oh. to that. Yeah. Hey, there he is. This was yeah. This was uh, uh this was uh, I auditioned for that at Kaufman Studios in Astoria. Yep. And I think the only reason why I got that job is because I went in there and you know I I, I did the audition, and I was in Kaufman Studio and they they were doing a an episode or there was starting an episode with uh, um. This was the first episode after 9-11 mm -hmm. that they came back. Is that right? That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. And they, and they did it because they uh, they wanted to – they didn't want kids to be afraid of firemen. Right, right. So, you know, you got a three- to four-year-old uh, um, age group that you're aiming at. And when I got to Kaufman Studios and they told me that Ses that's where Sesame Street is, like that's where it is. Yeah, you know, it's crazy, yeah. Big Bird's Nest. Yeah, yeah. and Groucho's can. Dude, <laughs> and when I you look up in the uh, when you look up in the rafters, there's Snuffleupagus up in the corner. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. freakish. You know. And, and and I was there, and I was like, "Listen, wow. I'm here. I may never be here again. Could yeah. you take me in to see Sesame Street? Because I, I'd love to see it. I didn't grow up with Sesame Street, but I knew it was like an iconic place. So I was just so delighted to see like when. Big Bird really lives here. Yeah, you walk around that's, that that's huh? That's pretty cool. I think that's why I got the job, you know. And then awesome. and then it was, you know, it was a, that was a great job. It was up in 58 truck with my friend Charlie Roberta. You know, I played I played hockey with Charlie Roberta and Kevin Kelly. <laughs> you know, those are two two guys Kevin that Kelly, Charlie right? was Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. pretty cool with with the Muppets too because uh I did a job with Kermit once, right? So they pull him out of like a black <clears> bag. <throat> And you're like, oh my God, no, that's Kermy, you know. <laughs> and then well, when yeah, the, the yeah. thing goes up the back, the thing comes alive. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely. It's at, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Sharp, I think his name is Kevin Sharp. Um, Kevin Sharp. Yeah, he was. He is Elmo. He created Elmo. And when Elmo's moving his arms, there's two people operating him. But when Elmo's just like just Elmo, it, it's uh, just it's him. just him. And you are actually, it's, you don't even see the six foot black guy laying on the ground. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's Elmo's, it, it, it's Elmo's, there. not that it matters what color it is, but, you know, it's just Elmo is there. And like at the end of that, at the end of that shoot, um, I was supposed funny. to give Elmo a glass of milk and his cheese sandwich or something in, in the quarters of 58 truck. And I could not give Elmo a, a real glass of milk because they were afraid that if I ever spilt it on the doll, because that's the original, that's the original. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that, you know, gold. that was that was amazing. I that because my target audience was like, you know, three to four years old. It was I'd go to the supermarket and I, I, can you still hear me? Yeah, because yeah, because one of my one of my headphones is back. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd go to the supermarket and. Uh, like, you know, kids would hear me talk. They'd be sitting in a carriage and they'd hear me talking. They'd be like, you know, <laughs> because, like, you know, looking they, at they yeah, 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 yeah. That's you, watch the, that's the guy. you watch the video like 900 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That's the so guy. It was, they just, it, they just hear me talk and they'd be like, that's cool. Well, I your, know that guy from somewhere. Yeah. 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 I'm going to try to, I, I'm losing my, uh, they're running out of, go uh, off, uh, off the Bluetooth. You, can, yeah. Can you hear us now? I can still hear you, yeah, but yeah. I'm gonna lose Bluetooth. What was your character's oh. name on Sesame Street, Bill? Uh oh. Uh oh, we lost them. Bill, you may have to come back in the room. 
He, you know what? Did you did you mute him or he muted himself? He muted himself, brother. Oh, I got, it, I got uh, it. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Yeah, I had to go on the computer because my my headphones died. Yeah, what's well, firefighter Bill? Oh, firefighter Bill. You hey, go. Bill. You know, you know what I want to ask you? Yeah. Did you see the the shows after right, like Rescue Me and all those shows? Did you watch those shows and yes. and compare it or do all that stuff at all? I had an opportunity to to audition for Rescue Me, but I wouldn't do it because I was already employed by. Uh, um, um, third watch for you know, yeah. they had me employed for like you know a while, so I, I didn't think that would be cool to, to go over. Mm. Uh, I also had audition at, uh, a, a chance to audition for Oz, but I didn't want my grandkids to see me get raped in a in a shower. His <laughs> 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 grandpa, look. Yeah, look. <laughs> good thinking. Good thinking. That was now you're thinking ahead. Oh, finally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like this, grandpa. Oh, mm. oh God, look at grandpa now. Oh. He's crying. <laughs> what yeah, how, did the, uh, how did the actors, you know, respond to real firemen? Like, well, the thing was is that they, they, you know, uh, Eddie Sibrian, which is like, he's like six two, black hair, beautiful, you know, a beautiful guy, just a, mm -hmm. like a really good actor. He was um, part of the reason why I was able to continue to uh, to be on the show was because of. I wasn't, they, they kind of put me down as I was a, a consultant, but I re really never, you know, consult. I drove the fire truck. Mm -hmm. You know, that was kind of weird. Like, you know, have the director and the camera crew on the roof of the fire truck. And they say, you know, I say, I I'm going to drive the truck. I How do you want me to drive it? And they said, well, drive it like you would, you know, oh, you would a fire. And I said, <laughs> I said, is everybody, you know, is everybody safe and buckled in up there? They were like, yeah, we're all safe. And then we did that one take and they were like, we can't do that anymore. That <laughs> we're going to lose people, yeah. So, um, oh, so with that, like Eddie Sibrian was like, I think the first show I did, he goes over and he's supposed to force the door. And and I was like, okay, you know, you don't do it that, like that. You got to do it like this. Mm. And, you know, and even though it was, you have to realize that it's, it's for, you got a little dramatic license because it's television. Mm -hmm. And and you know, as far as like mule kicking the door, uh, I'm not gonna say I never did it, but that's why I got a tool in my hand. I don't need it to mule kick a door. I could just force it open like a gentleman, you know. So that that was kind of like the the part that where you know I said this is how you're gonna do this. You know, we're we're gonna walk, we're gonna run, we're not gonna run. Nobody does this, and there's only so much of that that you know I can get away with. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times it just. Things don't happen that way, and it was all right. You know, right, right. Okay, all right. That's part of the, that's part of the thing, though, right? It's just about getting the shot. Sometimes it's you know, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of factors going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the check clear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a man. You see that? You see? You see that right there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're doing that. One time we we're doing a shot at the end of the season. It was uh, um, <laughs> so it's the end of the season. It was a show where there was uh, uh, Eddie, the lead fireman, he gets shot. There's a guy that shoots him for some reason. I don't know. I never really read the whole scripts. I only read the part that I was in, you know, because I basically had two lines, whatever. So why am I going to read the whole thing? Whatever. So he gets shot, and there's another fireman that gets shot, right? So at the end of the scene, the, at, at the end of the show, they, they got to set up. The whole city block is closed off. There's things on fire everywhere. There's cars blowing up and, you know, smoke. and start the fire here and all this kind of stuff. And they got this uh, this fireman who was a – he was a real actor. You know, another guy, like, you know, beautiful man. He got him laying on the ground. And me and Michael Beach, you know who Michael Beach is? Uh, he, he played an EMT on the show. He was in True Romance. He's been – He's been on uh, uh, Guns of Anarchy. He's a he's a black guy that uh, that really really good actor. He's got really accomplished actor. So the, in between takes, these two guys are talking. Michael Beach went to Juilliard. This guy oh, went to shit. Columbia, you know. And they're talking and they're going back and forth about you know who did a hello. I did you know Shakespeare in a park. You know, all this kind of shit. And I'm sitting there and I think I got like one line, you know. And and, <laughs> and you got, went to 103 poster. <laughs> and, and I went to school of hard knocks, right? and I went to uh, 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 and, and I got one line, and you know they start this thing, and and, and you know so everybody takes twenty minutes to get it started, 
and they come to me with the camera and it's like boom like that and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> He's from ER. Chris Chulak from ER comes over to me. He goes, like, he looks at me like, oh, yeah. shit. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, you got one line. You got one line. You I got, got one job. It's going to take me like a half <laughs> hour to set up this shot, set up this shot again, right? Oh, they, they do it like three or four times. I get the line right, but every time they finish the shot, the makeup lady comes over with another like gallon bottle of, of blood and pours it on on this guy that's laying on the ground. And him <laughs> and Beach are talking about like, I went to Juilliard, you went to think, and I said, I don't think you're gonna be back next season. <laughs> <laughs> don't look like you can make it. <laughs> From the, the looks of all this blood, every time they come over, your blood pile is getting bigger. <laughs> Holy shit, and, that's you know, funny. And that's like, you know. That's a day on the set. That's good cool. stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. You got, you got any other it. works coming up? Any movies you're in? Any shows I'm you're sorry. in? What do you got? Uh, no, I, I just, I just, you know, my kids, uh, my kids, uh, my youngest son is, he's playing ice hockey down in Maryland. He's playing junior ice hockey. My other son's just graduated from college. My oldest boy is on the tugs. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just getting back into it. I just, like, I, I, I got my new headshots. You probably you have a copy of the new headshot. I got the new headshots right before the the coronavirus hit. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got great pictures, and nobody's Nothing working. Nothing to do. Nobody's working. <laughs> yeah, nobody's <laughs> working. I just I just did audition for this new. It's a pilot. Um, I don't know if you you probably have it on a different reel, Pete. Uh, Pete. All right, I'll find um, it. I'll find it. I did audition for a, a one line of for a. a a pilot. It's called um, McDreamy's in it. So it's funny. called Ways and Means. But I, I don't think I got. It. I haven't heard back from him. So you know, well, that's that's a crazy thing. You, you do it and you forget about it. If you get it, I think that's probably why I was successful because it didn't. You know, it didn't matter. You know, yeah. it didn't. What fun it didn't though, matter. right? Like it's a lot of fun, man. You know, you went from being like doing uh, being a longshoreman. To, to a fire, yeah, fire to a roadie, job. to a firefighter, to I a got freaking TV star. God bless you, man. God bless you. All, yeah. God bless you. all right, Pete, is it that time, brother? Oh, oh yes, in fact. Okay. okay, okay, okay. It is that time, and it's time for the old school oh, tip man. of the day. Hey. Hey. You want to do it in Shakespeare's voice, or how do you want to do it? The last score and seven years ago. Alas, I mean, uh, <laughs> old school tip. Oh, Yurik. Right. <laughs> my, my old school tip of the day is that this is, uh, you know, listen. I, I understand you guys like technical stuff, and I understand that you know uh, the, there there is a technical side of firefighting and. And, you know, I, I, I tell you, all you guys out there, know your tools, know your job. That's basically, that's on you. The one thing that I want to I wanna um, give you is that uh, respect everybody. You got to respect everybody. Um, people call you um, for help because they need your help. You know, um, a lot of people do a lot of stupid things and we show up to help them out. And, uh, you know, you're on scene. When you're on scene, um, we do this stuff every day. You know, this is a traumatic experience for the people out there that you're serving, that you're taking care of. So, um, you know, you have to conduct yourself, uh, in a professional manner at all times. And I, I'll give you an example. Like, you know, you go to a, a, a motor vehicle accident and, and, you know, there's, there's a, a DOA in the car and, your your standby engine and you stretch the line off the engine and you may be 50 100 yards away from the vehicle that that you know where the the, the de deceased parties in you got to remember that that's somebody's brother or sister or mother or aunt and and you know you're standing there with the line that's no time to be like telling jokes you know it's no time to be like even though you, you know you're talking about what you're making for dinner tonight you just got to remember that people are there watching you. Um, you're under a microscope. 
remember that that you know you represent your company you rep- represent the fire service as a whole and you just have to really be cognizant about how you act on scene um never take any pictures you know i i, I just I, if there's one thing that I, you know like if if you want to go back after everybody's gone and take pictures for technical knowledge or, or or you know something that you could do better by all means but you know don't don't do that and the other thing I, I just wanted to tell you is that I, I am deathly afraid of horror movies. Godzilla puts me in a tailspin. <laughs> I spent 27 years of my career scared to death. Oh, God, I don't want to find anybody. <laughs> like, that, you know, and if, I, if I could take it for that long... You can't do it. That's all I got. Thank you for you making it. Oh, nice. That's exactly. really good. No crap. Good job. As Chief Steve Captain says, Wolf, always be professional. Be professional, be professional Chief Steve says. Yeah, all right. Oh, yeah, is that, oh, I got another one for you. That's uh, Ialpi. Uh, uh, Lee Ialpi. Go. Uh, we're in a commercial, uh, commercial building, uh, fire on the first floor, big open area upstairs. Uh, I, I'm I, I'm I'm in the smoke by myself. No, no searchlight. Come up out of the stairs. I you know I got my light on. I'm I'm, I'm fumbling around. Who walks into me? Lee Lee Ielpi. He says you know. And I used to run into Lee all the time. Again, like it was a competition. So if I run into Lee, I'm in the right spot. You know. And and I, I I'm like Lee. You know, I'm up here. I can't, I can't see a thing. What's going on? What do you got? And he says, shut your light off. And I shut my light off. And he said, now you can see what you got. And sure enough, it's almost like when you drive with your headlights in the fog. And the fog, you, you can't see. The high beams on, you can't, because all you see is smoke. Hmm. I shut my light off. Wow. And there was holes in the floor where fire was coming up through the floor. Wow. And the fire was in the rear. And you could see it because wow. I shut my light off. He said, shut your light off, though. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, and I just shut my light off, and I looked around. I was like, "Oh shit!" You know, because the, the you know the, the flashlight and the smoke sometimes just doesn't make right. It does uh, reflect back at you. It does, yeah, that's uh, a technical you know. tip for the day. That's just something that, right. you know, I like. I like it. them both. I like yeah. them both. Bill, great I, job, I, man. Bill, I want to. I want to. I want to thank you guys like uh, so much for the honor and the privilege of, of coming on here and talking to you two. Because I love PD, I'm sorry you're out of this conversation. <laughs> no, I, love you, I love you two guys when I was working with you. And I know like I had my favorites in 288 and you weren't them. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't think I wasn't watching it. Don't think I wasn't watching it. And I know I never liked you. <laughs> like you. Yeah, see? You guys yeah. you guys remember that had, there was a job in a in a in a um in a lumber yard that hazmat ended up operating a line at. I do remember that. Okay. Were you at that job, Louis? I, do, I think I was at that job, was yes. Was that where we came in? We were somewhere else. We came in late. Go ahead. Up, where was the in? job? I don't know. Was I don't know. Was Bill it McCarty? Bill McConnell, actually. It was in Astoria, and we pulled up, and when we pulled up, we came up like the job was on the next block, and we pulled down the street. And we pulled down the street, and it was a five-story MD with a fire on every floor. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were, you were the only engine there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You that job? I, I was. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. I was. I would. That was crazy. That was like every apartment. I think on, it was Astoria. Yeah, every apartment on uh, in the building that was facing the uh, the lumber yard was going, and it was just us, right? Yes. The only thing I would have done different. I don't remember who was working there. It was F- my, uh, Fagan from Squad One. You, Fagan. Not I remember me. All I remember is that like we, there was six stories and we had one guy on each story. Each floor. Yeah, and I, I was, that. was I really worried that. about this, losing the stairwell. I remember we, that. We lost the stairwell. We lose like five guys. And I call. I call in. I put in. A, I call a dispatch. I was like, "You better get some companies down here." On the <laughs> We're gonna like, need some help. We're gonna need a bigger. Big yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, I would have split the. You know, thinking now, I would have split the company. Had to, uh, you know, had the chauffeur a uh, uh, hook up. Had two guys stretch the line, and the rest of the guys do the searches. Mm-hmm. But you know, twenty twenty, man. It all worked out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you remember that job? That was a good job. It was a good job. I can't believe that you guys can pull that. Oh, you can out remember every job you go to almost. Well, this I, is I, I'm I can't remember who was. That was. I don't, a, that I was, I don't uh, remember every job I went to. I, I, it's a, it's impossible. Jobs like that, you kind of remember. That but. I remember because we came, we turned the corner. It was like there was nobody there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We only rigged there. It was like we were like, what the heck is going on, a, right? This is a, yeah, there's an apartment building on fire right here. <laughs> nobody there. Yeah, love it. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What do you but, got, Ruffy? Uh, I have. There was a couple things. Uh, let me get my phone. First off, I want to congratulate uh, Captain Dan. I hope I say his last name right. Do- Dozier, 30 years. He just retired engine 60 in the boogie down. So uh, he just retired the other day. Good, good house. Uh, I wanted to, on on a sad note, <clears throat> uh, we had uh, supervising dispatcher retired. Eddie Overton, uh, Eddie O, former mm-hmm. member of uh, the New York Fire Patrol, mm-hmm. and he was a life member at Uniondale Fire Department uh, in Long Island. Uh, he just passed away. Unfortunately, I also had, uh, I think it was the same week here. Uh, again, I don't know if I'm saying the name right. Danny Diod, Diod Harry, and he was a Manhattan dispatcher at number 427. Uh, I think he was a young young kid, man, 30-something yeah, years old. He just passed away. And then I wanted to talk about um, Chief Warrant Officer Daniel, again, I don't hope I say his last name right, Trial. Yeah, like he's, he's from uh, Warwick. Yeah. He's he, from uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His dad was on the job. His dad was a lieutenant yeah, in 43 yeah. truck. Uh-huh. Uh, he's retired. Yeah. But uh, he was, uh, he unfortunately, uh, him and two uh, colleagues, uh, they died in a, a helicopter crash in, in New Black York. Oak, uh, yeah, Black Oak helicopter crash. The yeah. other day, Medivac uh, helicopter. So I just yeah. wanted to uh, yeah. give our condolences to those guys and their families. Obviously, we're thinking about them. Salute. Amen, brothers. You guys got any more questions? That's nope. it, man. I am questioned out. About it. I got I got a couple more pages, I guess. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, Calamari, take it easy. You <laughs> baby pictures? <laughs> uh, All, All right. right. So shout out to we got the uh, we got the live show on Monday, baby. So check out the live show. The uh, live show? New Chief I'm going to have, have my wife, Louis going to have his wife, and my brother Steve will have his wife, and they'll talk about what it's like being that, that person at home. Wife of the five. I couldn't do it, bro. Yeah. I could, you know, not because I don't – yeah, but I just couldn't do it. I couldn't, like, you no. know, go home. We got a lot of – yeah, That's a lot of years. Yeah, That's we, a have, we got a lot of questions that they've been sending in, so it should be a good show. And then the following Thursday, we got those two guys from Boston. Oh, oh, good. I don't have to do anything. I give you a little something. You put those pictures up, you know, next week, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know the ones. Oh, okay. All right, all right Petey. Petey, Petey, do you do your announcer thing. Take us out. Take it out, yeah. Petey. Take them out. My if you guys is. are listening to us on iTunes Podcast, Spotify, or wherever fine audio podcasts are found, you should also be heading on over to YouTube.com forward slash get salty experience where you will take your booger hook off the bang switch and hit the like subscribe and share button that's right when you do that you tell the youtube algorithm hey i want to see more of this and that's it's helped- important it, yeah exactly it hooks us up hook us up we'll hook you guys up get more great guests <laughs> like mr billy walsh right here on the show also guys head on over to instagram where you'll find us at Salty Dog Inc., where Mr. Louis Refrano is curating the finest, saltiest fire photos in the game and showing them there and giving you the last-minute info for the show. Last but not least, guys, head on over to GettinSaltyApparel.com, where you'll find the coolest firefighter gear and accessories. And also, if you have a question for the show for our Q&As, please email us at GettinSaltyExperience.com. Oh, actually, GettinSaltyExperience at gmail.com. And there it is, my friends. Beautiful. Billy, Captain don't, Walsh. Uh, Thanks, don't hang up yet. Uh, Thanks, Captain. Oh, yeah, when I we go you. off uh, live, we'll be in the back yeah. so where we yeah. were before. Yes. Boom. Again. Bye, fellas.
stay low and go. All right, Bill, thank you for everything. We'll see you at the big one, everybody. Okay, my friend. Cheers, bros.